The 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Don't wait for an AC breakdown this summer. Get a free in-home estimate with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Schedule your appointment today at standardheating.com. The 93X half ass Morning Show. 93 X. My favorite conspiracy theory is the belief that we didn't land on the moon, that we faked the moon mission. All right, let's say that, that we did fake it. Who cares? <laughs> like, what's the craziest thing that happened? Like, maybe we ticked off the Russians. Maybe Neil Armstrong got laid a few more times. <laughs> let's face it, come close in time. That moon credit really gets your foot in the door. Uh, <laughs> In fact, that's the only reason that you could get mad. Like if Neil Armstrong had sex with your girlfriend, then you could dissect the footage. Honey, look at this. The flag moves. He puts the flag on the moon, but it's waving and it's moving, but there's no stars in the picture. You can't see any stars. You know why? Because you're a whore. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. No way. That's great. It's showtime! Music has been taken out of this portion of the half ass Morning Show podcast for licensing reasons. Oh, wow. I'm not expected to talk over this, am I? You can. One of the greatest songs of all time. What's the deal here, Cubby? Uh, the, uh, the Americans, we won. We landed on the moon in 1969 <laughs> on this day. <laughs> We're the best. <laughs> We're number one. We did it. The Americans, he says, <laughs> yep. we won. You know who else wins every day? Corporate yeah. radio. <laughs> <laughs> Corporate radio wins again. So for people podcasting, we're playing Ozzy Osbourne, Bark at the Moon. I listen to the song every day, no lie, every single day. And Nick and I were talking about this off the air a couple weeks ago. I also like to watch covers of the song because it's, you know, Jakey Lee, the guitar player, he killed it. I mean, and pretty much anybody who has listened to Ozzy Osbourne... You know, obviously, they'll, they'll talk about Randy Rhodes, certainly Zach Wild, and they'll mention how underrated Jakey Lee is, and you bring this song up, it's perfect. Because he very likely here created the perfect rock metal riff. And I think, you know, I like it when bands put their own spin on songs. I don't like it when people change the guitar parts for Bark at the Moon. There's no reason to do it. Why would you alter perfection? It's perfect. The only thing I, I do like Zach Wild when he, he puts in his you know his signature I know harmonics. What you mean. Yes, he does. He makes that sound cool. So today in 1969, we landed on the moon. 9:56 no, p.m. Not that you need a reason to play "Bark at the Moon." Moon. Not that you need to commemorate it in such a way, but there you go. You listen to this song every damn day. Every day. And do then you, I, I play it every day on guitar, too. Do you listen to the solo? Uh, I play the Does background it sound like the solo. This? So if I was in a band playing this song, I'd be the guy in the background going, dent, 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 and I wouldn't be doing the solo. Okay. I, I'm following you. There's only a couple parts I can kind of do. I was in the music business for a while. I'm following this. Yeah. Uh, it's as beautiful today as it was in 1983. So basically, I'd be on stage. There you are. Performing the background to the solo, and then I would be the guy that was not surrounded by girls when I got off the stage. <laughs> the guy doing the solo, he would be. You'd I've seen you on stage. You. you know what? Two words come to mind I've when you see you on me on stage. stage. Stage presence. Oh! <laughs> when I think Josh, I think stage presence. <laughs> I am what you call a shoegazer. It did appear to me, Josh and I have shared the stage once or twice... Um, performing Josh on the guitar and, and me on the drums. A couple of cover bands were merciful, sympathetic, allowed us to dummy down their act and, and play a song or two over the years. Your, uh, your tennis shoes are more or less glued to the stage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get into it. You know, it's funny. I, I, wanted, um, I want you guys to all come over again. And I thought, you know, now that I'm kind of getting into guitar, maybe somebody might ask, hey, play a tune, you know? <laughs> and I thought, okay, I did. And so I was pretending you guys were watching, and I was terrified. <laughs> oh, no. And it's you're some so of my cute. best friends in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I bought a strap to stand up and play, and, I, and my legs get weak. You think you'd be <laughs> nervous to even play a song in front of the four of us? I, I would. So if we get on stage again, 
I want someone to break my leg so I have to be in a wheelchair. God, I got <laughs> okay. it. So I'd have an excuse for no stage presence and sitting down. It's a lot easier to play sitting down. You know, Battencourt, uh, one of the greatest guitar players of all time. Sure. Of Extreme. And Rihanna, she plays with, uh, he plays with Rihanna as well. Uh-huh. He mentioned sometimes if, uh, if you're a fan and you've noticed he puts his foot up on the monitor, the monitor speaker, he said, it looks cool, it's a rock move, but the real reason is it's kind of like sitting down and playing guitar for some of the real <laughs> oh, hard parts. Yeah. He said he's cheating. He can rest the guitar. Because yeah. uh, he talks about when you look cool, you, you don't want it up high. You want it kind of low by your waist. But sometimes for more difficult parts, that's really hard to do. So he puts his foot up on the monitor. He's right-handed. Yep. He's got the guitar, puts his the, right, bo- the body of the guitar on his right hip, right. puts his right leg up, so Balances it's like he's almost it balancing it. Yeah, so it's almost like he's sitting down. Yeah, you want it strung low. You want to look cool. Not like the Beatles where it's up high by your neck? <laughs> right below their chin, basically. <laughs> Some guys have made that look cool, the high guitar look. Tom Morello, I mean, he's known yeah. for having the high guitar. Yeah. Getty Lee. That brings up a funny story. I've been, we've been lucky over the years to to get a chance to meet some great musicians uh, through this miserable, miserable gig here at the radio station. One of them was when I got to, uh, well, we got to become friendly with Frank Hannon and Jeff Keith and Tommy Skio and Brian Wheat. Hell, uh, all of Tesla, all of Tesla, including Dave Rude, who joined the band when Tommy Skio left. And we we, we um, got to meet him at a snowmobile getaway at Izadis. Izadis. Um And then when Tesla would come to town, I would bother them. Hey, it's, it's me, the radio dude. Do you mind if I come and say hello? And they were always so great. And at one point or another, do you remember when I was taking guitar lessons, Josh? Yeah, it, back when Best Buy had, I, I missed the Best Buy music area where they had their, like a guitar center within Best Buy. Boy, yeah, I, that was fun. I failed those guys terribly. I failed <laughs> them. Oh, no, you know what it was is the guitar teacher you had, he was so good. He was very good. To the point, I saw him, I went to some of the grand openings through the radio station. We had promotions of the grand openings of these music stores within Best Buy. And he would he just stood out front jamming. And I remember thinking, this guy is going to be someone. A He's guy, a kid by the name of Stoney. Stoney, yeah. Cool name. Anyone know Stoney? Text us. Whatever happened to Stoney? I know he was playing in a in a couple of big old 80s rock yep. tribute bands here in town. That guy could shred. Uh, someone, 651-989-9393, if you know Stoney that used to hang out at the Best Buy there in, uh, what town is that, Roseville? What? Yeah. Ye, was it Roseville? Or was it, maybe I can't remember the one. I thought it was the Richfield one, but okay. I, I don't remember it, it exactly. It could be right. Years ago, we did a, a promotion with Best Buy where they were going to teach me how to play the guitar. And uh, I've always struggled, um, like most most of us. When I was you know, 14, 15, I sat down and tried to learn how to play the guitar, and my fingers just don't operate like that. But now, fast forward to I'm um, 40-some years old, and they want to teach me how to play the guitar, and they sat me down with this stony guy. Now, part of the problem also was I think the lesson started at around 11 a.m. That's not a good hour for me. No. <laughs> I'm ready to go bedtime at 11 a.m. You know, take a little nappy after we do this miserable show. You get up at 3.30 in the morning by 11. So I'm not in the right mindset. Stoney tried his best. You're right. He's wildly talented. Uh, much, much too advanced for a, a, a lame brain like me. He tried his best. I didn't accomplish squat. But through this process, um, I got to meet up with Frank Hannon of Tesla and record a video of Frank Hannon showing me some guitar tricks. And then the deal was, well, we'll put that up on Best Buy's website. So Tesla comes to town. I go to the Mirage, not the Mirage. Uh, the, what's the one in White Bear Lake? Uh, the Myth. The Myth. The Mirage is the one. On, what was that off of? 94 in uh, Riverside? Well, they ago. used to have all the 80s rock used shows. to go see all the... I, so I go to the Myth and meet with Frank Hannon. And, of course, we were familiar with each other from these snowmobile trips and other encounters. And he's such a wonderful guy. And I bring the uh, guitar that Best Buy gave me and I explain to him, you know, why don't you show me a couple of things? 
and then we'll put it up on the website. And he says, sure. And uh, he says, well, bust out the guitar. And I pulled it out of the guitar box, whatever you professionals call it. What is that thing? The case? You put the case. <laughs> I pulled it out of the case, and I had strung it wicked low because I wanted to, like you were explaining about, you know, cool guitar. I wanted to look cool when I stood there with the guitar. Well, look at Slash. He looks cool. Right, right. So when I pulled it out the case, you know, Frank knows I'm a complete beginner. I pull it out the case, I pull it over my neck, and I stand there staring at Frank like, okay, show me what I should do. And he says, well, first of all, and he starts cinching up the guitar strap, and the guitar starts rising up on my body. He goes, first things first, let me take care of this. And he, he, you know, he cinches the strap, and he goes, who do you think you are, Jimmy Page? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and next thing you know, I had that damn guitar up around my neck like uh, George Harrison did in 1960. <laughs> but that was the proper way to learn. Yeah. He's saying, don't have, you can't have it down at your freaking knees. You're not a pro. Not that he was rude about it. Frank's like the nicest guy in the whole world. But he then he taught me a few, and there I was, strumming my nipples, basically. <laughs> <laughs> but it was... I, I, I always wish I would have committed myself. I would love to be able to play a riff like, say, Bark at the I can't. You're not too it, old. It, it'll never happen. Do, I'm just My hands aren't built for that. They're not built for that. Wild fa- uh, fan in Vermont, Jesus, just went and saw Event Sevenfold last night, Boston. Yeah. And uh, th- that is such a good live band. And Sinister Gates. I mean, he's got to be one of the best guitar players right now. Mm-hmm. So good. I, I couldn't tell you the name of the new song we're playing, but the guitar solo in there, it's impeccable. It's awesome. Absolutely awesome. That That's one of the better live bands I've seen in a long time. They can, uh, they can get her. They sure can. I mean, the Iron Maiden show that we went to, um, the not, not the most recent one, but the one before it, was um, the best show I've ever seen. Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden, yeah. You got uh, your Dave Murrah. And your Adrian Smith and your Yannick Gers, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, a trio of maestros right there. Do you see their drummer Nico McBrain got brained by a gong in a show recently? Oh no, the, last few days. the gong behind him fell down and yeah. hit him on the. Oh no, oh. Bruce Dickinson, the lead singer, he he hits the gong with such fervor it fell on their drummer. <laughs> I bet that's happened. You, you, you got to imagine that's happened to him before. And I bet, you know, it's too bad that the whole band's playing because I bet that was really funny sounding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bet. That's here's it what our off his head. Here's what our drummer's skull sounds like when it's smashed into him. Boy, he took no. that like a champ. Well, he's tough. He is tough. So there you go. Welcome to the program this morning. God, these hours suck. Don't they? They do. They're not mm-hmm. ideal. Sucks being up this early. I hate it. I-, I always have and I always will. I've never gotten used to it. Earlier, Nick said, oh my gosh, it's 525. And I told him that's my least favorite 25 of the day. Yeah. <laughs> not, I, it's, too, it's too tough to be awake at 525 and then know the mics are going to crack in 15 yep. minutes. People yep. will still ask. You know, people will still ask. Friends even, you know. They'll ask me, you know, because you wake up so early on the weekdays, do you wake up early as hell on weekends? And the answer is F, double F no. Lucky. Uh, I would be in an asylum if I woke up at 3.30, 4 a.m. On the, on the, even if I woke up at 6 or 7 on the weekends. That's where I'd be, I'm I'd be, at. I'd be miserable. I know you guys, some of you get up early, and I, I'm so happy I don't have that problem. Yeah, I can't sleep past 7 o'clock on the weekends. Same here. Anybody who knew me at 18, 19, 20 years old, there's no way they would have ever predicted that I would be able to keep these hours. I loved the nights. I preferred working nights. This is when I used to go to bed. Yeah, I was the same way in my 20s. This for is sure. when I used to go to sleep. It seems as if being an early bird is trending. The Wall Street Journal just did a big article on suddenly a lot more of us are early birds. Well, specifically, they start out discussing how a lot more of us are early birds these days as far as dinner time goes. I definitely am. Oh, yeah. That's how I was raised, Mm -hmm. though. To eat dinner at like four or five. Oh, really? Yeah, ours was six. Well, between five and six. Ours was always, yeah, four or five. Yep. 
I just wish somebody would have served me dinner. <laughs> Restaurants are now seating 10% of customers between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m., and that's up 5% from 2019. Did I, did, I, did I read that correctly? Yep. More people are coming in for dinner between 2 and 5 p.m. More and more these damn days. Yeah, when I was working probably back in, geez, I don't even know, 2018, 2017, our dinner rush was always between 5 and 8. At you, Red Robin? Yeah, you could, never, you could never get off the line. You couldn't do anything between 5 and 8. Because yeah. that's when you were just... Nuts to butts busy. Copy that. I don't know. I still I still prefer to eat dinner around 7.30. Oh, yeah, I'm angry. Uh, that's that's, that's yeah. happening. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's Why weird. are you angry that that's happening? Because, no, if that happens to me, I don't like it. I, if I'm not eating dinner like before 6 or more like 5.35, I, I turn into an angry person. <laughs> A little hangry? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the way I size it out is I always get a nap every effing day. Every effing day between about 11 and 2, I'm completely unconscious. 11 to 2.30, something like that. Maybe noon to 2.30, I'm completely unconscious. I don't build up an appetite again until 7, 7.30. Oh, people, I- the people will push dinner and try to push 5.30, 6 o'clock dinner on me, and I'll say, well, I've only been awake for... You know, three hours. I'm not hungry yet. That's just the way I'm set up. So seven, seven thirty. That's that's more my preferred dinner time. Now these joints, these restaurants, they're seating more people between two and five, so they're closing earlier. And uh, that's that's the uh, the trend that's been happening. I have noticed restaurants are closing earlier, mm-hmm. which doesn't affect me until we have a couple days off. In which case, I'm infuriated. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I would never use that in normal life, but the one or you know two days I've got there, that really upsets me. Yeah, dude, it's so true. Why are you closed? It's eight. They are getting. They're saying it's much easier to get a reservation now at seven than it ever was. It's difficult now to get a reservation at five. Yeah, give me I, that. Give me that four thirty reservation. That's that's my sweet spot right there. That used to be the best, right? Because you knew you could walk right in. Uh-huh. Yeah, I would assume seven o'clock, especially at a popular restaurant. Mm-hmm. There's no, no way chance. you're getting in, mm-hmm. especially now, that kind of Friday Saturday. They included some information in this report about uh, not that any of us would care, but even Broadway shows are starting earlier now. They say okay. it used to be a thing on Broadway in New York City, eight o'clock was always showtime from from the 1700s up until the, I don't know, whenever they started doing the Broadway thing. Now they're starting their shows at seven o'clock and every one of the Broadway enthusiasts are, well, that's a little dip, but people are getting out and having dinner earlier, so let's get to a show a little earlier. There are a couple of theories as to why this is happening. (laughs) This is ridiculous, is this true? It's become trendy for young people to be healthy, avoid alcohol, and get a full night's sleep. What the hell's happened to teenagers? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, definitely everyone's smoking alcohol. weed. Nobody's nobody's drinking anymore. Yeah, that mm-hmm. alcohol thing, we, we've heard that before. That's the stat of young people drinking alcohol is way down. I can't stand to hear that, that young people are turning to marijuana and not uh, having keg parties like we did back in the day. That's disappointing to hear. Deceptively girthy Jesus said, I like eating dinner around noon because that's when dinner time is, city Oh, sure. <laughs> I, re- I remember the first time I ever heard that. I went to um, Moorhead College. Yes. And some of the kids were from North Dakota. And a lot of them were from, you know, they were like in farm towns and worked on farms and stuff like that. And they'd be like, hey, you want to go to dinner? I'm like, sure. What time do you want to meet up? They're like, no, now. I'm like, well, what do you mean? It's lunchtime. And that was... And there was, you know, dinner and then supper. supper. And growing up, we did call dinner supper. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right? We yeah. did too. So, yeah, I, I had never heard dinner as lunch. While you're at it, why don't you, why don't you oh. tell us the correct pronunciation of sauna? <laughs> get, keep going. <laughs> I like being called a city. It. I think that's pretty funny. Working from home might be another reason why folks are heading off to dinner so early. If you don't have to drive home from work and then get ready... To go out, you can meet people earlier. Plus, you can skip out of work earlier if your boss isn't there. Your boss isn't there. He's a he or she's at home too. Yeah, I kind of wonder how much of that um, is 
just specifically the working from home or the hybrid jobs now, we're only going a couple day, couple days. I mean, I wonder if that's virtually a hundred percent of it. You know, people are just around home more. Mm-hmm. Not getting off work at five or six or whatever it ends up being. Yeah, I don't. I mean. We were just talking about this earlier this week with uh, Janelle on Tuesday. Somebody says you want to meet for dinner at like 8. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> are you a vampire? We're Why would you be up that late? Dinner Why? in bed? It doesn't make any sense. It's going to be dark soon in the summer. Are you crazy? I have no problem with that. I yeah. have no problem with an 8 o'clock dinner time. Not for me. Not for me. But, you know, maybe if I nap like you did, it'd be different, you know. I, I How is it that you don't? What are you, some kind of a friggin' Terminator or something? No, the key is to hate your life outside of work. It, Th- that, you know, because you're so tired all the time. Do you have problems relaxing? Uh, yeah, I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody sent me a, a picture yesterday. It was funny, a meme. Gosh, I wish I could give him credit. Um, and it, it was somebody running, like, with their hands in the air. They're super excited, and it said, I just finished a marathon and underneath it said on netflix uh, <laughs> and i thought hey that's me man it's perfect for you <laughs> well we, we we've we've led different lives i suppose for the most part i we've worked together for so long it still just throws me that most days you don't get us a, a nap in the afternoon uh, there's no way i you couldn't keep me awake most days past 11 o'clock in the morning i try i um I mean, I try every day to... I usually get like half hour, and that's actually pretty good. Oh, no, it is not. That is ridiculous. That's not going to cut it. God dang, man. Yeah, I don't know. I, I always thought that I would die first. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll die at the same time. Well, if, Or within we, minutes of finding out the news about the other th- that is passing. Our, that is our plan, and that's likely. I just, I can't imagine that. Um, I, I just, I physically cannot stay awake. Once we get out of here... But then again, I don't have, uh, as you described a few days ago, a really stupid kid running around the house. I mean, dumb. <laughs> I love him to death. But I don't boy, have that kid is not bright. And you've had, you know, other children in and out the house over the years. I've never had that distraction or those responsibilities. So there is that. That is a grand difference. All I've ever had to deal with my entire radio career. All I've ever had to deal with when I get home is a pet. Send them outside, give them some food, kick them up the ass, whatever you do with a pet. Oh, pet's taken care of? I got the whole rest of the day to myself. So there is a big difference there. Intellectually, that's where my son is at. <laughs> pet, he's got pet-level intelligence. You have to water him, feed him. To the point where if if anyone, if you guys have a kid, Ashley, uh, you're the youngest. If you have a kid growing up, I've got this 529 plan that I've been putting money in for him for college. It's a waste of money. You can have it. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Unless you can use that for pro wrestling school or something like that. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be completely wasted. <laughs> if I was unable to get any sleep during the day, hell yeah, I'd probably want dinner at 4.30 or 5 p.m., but that's not my situation, so. Yeah, I don't even want to tell you how early I, I'd be okay having dinner. Let's just say I said 3.30 p.m. Where would you be? <laughs> oh, I'd be totally fine with that. I, I'd be at the table with you. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I'm, I'd, I'd say on an average day, depending on my wife's schedule, it's like anywhere between 3.30 and 5. Or, and the kid's schedule, too, if he's got something at night. Mm-hmm. You know, something for dumb kids. Whatever dumb kids do. <laughs> whatever, whatever dumb kids are doing these days. I just, oh, man. <laughs> As soon as I wake up in the morning, I'm thinking about when I'm going to nap. Not that it's a question. I know I'm going to get to it. And I usually know what time it's going to happen. There's days like that. But I love sleep. I I think sleep is the greatest joy in life. Do you guys ever, uh, like when you wake up, you walk to the bathroom, and then you're thinking on the way to the bathroom... When can I go back to bed? Yo, every, every day. Yeah, every oh, really? Every day. Every day. Every, every day. day. Sometimes, yeah, I'm doing the math. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like, when can I do that? I'm thinking about, like, all the things I need to do before I need to accomplish before I can get on that couch and, with a blanket on me, taking a nap. I was just having this conversation about sleep with a, a gal friend of mine. Uh, I don't know. if I brought her up before, Josh? Uh, my gal friend, Quiftifer? <laughs> <laughs> or is it or is it Quiftifer? No, it's Quiftifer. Quiftifer. Yeah. That's a current event joke. Quiftifer. There's a story going around about some lady. You know how we do it these days. You can't just 
go ahead and do something. You have to put it on social media first. You guys are social media dorks over there. You know what I'm talking about. Some lady jumped on social media and talked about how she was going to name her child. I can't even say it now. (laughs) She was preparing to name her child Quiftifer. (laughs) That's tough. And the internet went crazy. Everyone that says his name is going to sound like they have a speech impediment. Yes, they are. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you, and he's going to get this the rest of his life. Do you mean Christopher? No, Quiftifer. Uh, I knew I'd have trouble getting through that. Uh, and it's pronounced, it's pr- correctly pronounced sauna. We'll be right back on the Half Fast Morning Show. Half Fast Morning Show. 69. <laughs> This show sucks. Who are you, fart knockers? 93X. CJ Ham for standard heating and air conditioning. When I'm on the field, I can take anything. But at home with my family, we like everything to be comfortable. That's why I trust the pros at Standard. They've been keeping Minnesotans like me comfortable for over 90 years. Is your cooling system making strange noises or not cooling properly? Don't wait for an AC breakdown this summer. Get a free in-home estimate with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Schedule your appointment today at standardheating.com. We've got a number one deluxe meal. Is there anything else I can get you? Yeah, I'd also like a good night's sleep. Maybe something like the I didn't struggle all night with my uncomfortable CPAP mask. Sir, I think what you're looking for is Inspire. It's an implant that works inside your body to treat sleep apnea without a CPAP. Come on. He sounds angry. Inspire, sleep apnea innovation. Inspire is not for everyone. Talk to your doctor to see if it's right for you. And review important safety information at InspireSleep.com. Stupid news on the half-assed morning show. You know, we got here to start with for today's stupid news segment. You know what we got here, John? Well, of course, you know what we got here. A heroic act to start today's stupid news. That's nice to hear. A heroic act. You know what D. Snyder said years ago? What did he say? About heroes. They're hard to find. Heroes are hard to find. Met him at an airport once. You did? Really? Yeah. Like you actually met him? Yeah, Vegas airport. Said hi to him. Dude. It's awesome. He's very nice. He comes across that way. Yeah. Kiss sang to us years ago about a world without heroes. It's like a bird that never... What did he say? It's like a bird without wings or a bell that never rings. It's a world without heroes. All right. In Helena, Montana... A mother and her two sons pulled an elderly neighbor of theirs up out of his burning house. Nice. That is heroic. This past Monday morning, the Helena Fire Department chief, a guy by the name of John Campbell, said that his firefighters were responding to a structure fire like they do. When they showed up, uh, showed up this older cat, about 70, he had already been hauled out of the house by a family of three that lived across the street. And the old boy was uh, driven to the local hospital. He was pretty torn up. He was burned up. But he likely would have been killed dead if it wasn't for these three folks, the mom and two sons, who snatched him away from the fire. The fire chief said their actions are nothing short of heroic. Now, the mother of the family decided, not decided, but declined to give their names. They didn't want any extra attention. It's very pre-social media of them (laughs) to not want any extra. Probably confused the officers. Yeah, (laughs) Maybe they even launched an investigation. Mm -hmm. What are you hiding? That's not very today of you. Where I'm going with all this has everything to do with how and why these people were able to be there for the burning neighbor dude when he needed them most. Mom said she's got a 20-year-old son. He's fresh off a deployment from the Navy. He just got back home. Her other son is 18. He's leaving for the service next week. So the two brothers are hanging around the house together on that fateful night. And for some wacky-ass reason, the two boys had challenged each other to see who could stay awake the longest. (laughs) So because they were in the middle of this competition, both of them were awake Early on Monday morning, they hadn't slept for a certain amount of time. They smelled the smoke from the neighbor's burning house. They ran and woke her up. They grabbed three fire extinguishers, called 911 on the way out the door. 
That's wow. so good. What are the chances? That's incredible. <laughs> and it was no easy task. I mean, the house was more or less engulfed in flames. The smoke was thick. They couldn't see jack squat. They unloaded all three of their fire extinguishers just to get the flames around the front door knocked down enough for them to get inside. Once they managed to get in, they found the old man smooth unconscious in a chair just a few feet away. The weather channel blaring on the television. <laughs> he usually lets his grandson, Josh, hold the remote after they watch the Powerball. But there he was in his easy chair. He's uh, asleep. They grabbed him. They pulled his ass out. And this was all because they were having some kind of a who can stay awake uh, contest. Did you guys ever have one of those? No. Growing Definitely. Up? Yeah. I could have won mm-hmm. it when I was young. Yeah, I've had uh, a couple. My uh, Your godson had one at a sleepover earlier this summer. And both boys were out by, I'd say, oh, 11. <laughs> <laughs> I went down to check on them and say, well, I wonder if they're still going. And nope, they were both conked out on the couch. We're going to drink some Mountain Dew, stay up all <laughs> <laughs> we would always try to stay up all all night and then try to be the first one in at McDonald's to order. I don't know why. <laughs> That's we adorable. Just, because That's you fun. didn't have dates or liquor on you, <laughs> we I would just imagine. Loved doing that. No, I was back when we were like 10, 11. Where were your dates? Where was your liquor? <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah uh, that's not an excuse, Wobble. You didn't have football practice or anything like that? Oh, God, yeah. no. You weren't getting ready for... Uh... <laughs> Forget it. Uh, yeah, we, it's funny. We've been talking about sleep. We were talking about our sleep habits earlier this morning, and now our first story was about a couple of guys who were having a stay awake contest. So since we're talking about sleep, staying awake, things like that, Right now, how long do you think you could go without sleep? Uh, I could probably go a really long time. I don't get much sleep at all as it is. So, oh, oh really? What's that? Days. What's that like? What's I'd also like to know what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Um, boy, I don't know. It's been a long time since I've tried. I've definitely stayed up way too late on the weekends binging a show. I'd be hopeless. I, I'm sure I could do 24 hours. You really Most think so? Most people probably could. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. definitely could do that. You guys definitely yeah. think you could oh, do 24 hours? I've yeah. done sure. it. I, it sure. The last time I did it wasn't Well, you're too still long young. Ago. You're still young, actually. Yeah, but I take like four-hour naps during the day. Oh, I know, but we're talking I about... I need them. Don't get me wrong. I understand what you're saying. Well, when I was 25, I could I could stay up as long as you asked me to. Really? And, because and I with, thought I was going to die. Like, and I was with, at like with 26. Drinking, with drinking, even. When I was a kid, when I was your age, I could stay up forever. Now, no way I'd make it 24 hours. Absolutely no way. I yeah, could, I started like you shaking could do it 24 and stuff. hours. I don't, I don't think so, Cubby. I, I think, I bet you could. I'm wondering if I could get 48. I think I could. Two days. Uh, now, and and now is meth involved here? Or? <laughs> no, I, if I really tried to push it, I think I could. Uh, I think you start ha- having a hallucinog- halluc- hallucinating after like 72 hours. 72 hours. Mm-hmm. We did like this experiment in um, high school. It was like for psychology, and it was extra credit, and you could see how long you would go. But after 70, 72 hours, you had to be drove in by a parent. They had to sign a waiver form. Got crazy. Uh, don't. No one. Ha- I'm not trying to dare anybody to stay awake for 24 to 48 hours. Uh, you know, I don't want any of us to fall down a flight of stairs and and cripple yourself. Um. I bet I could but we've, do. But we've been talking about sleep and or lack of sleep, and yes, you you think you can until do until you mentioned that I was going to try it. But since you mentioned it, I, I won't. I could easily do two and a half weeks, <laughs> <laughs> longer than any of you. You would go insane. So you give me your best. I could do two and a half weeks of more. Part than of that. the reason I became Cheese Face Man was because I'd been awake for a day and a half and then drank a twelve pack of beer, and before I knew it, I was Cheese Face Man. Mm-hmm. You know, you'd have to. Uh, you know how like when the odometer runs over, right? Like yeah. when you're hungry or tired, if you just if you get past that real rough spot, then all of a sudden you're wide awake or mm-hmm. no longer hungry. I yep. think it would have to be that type of thing if you're going to stay awake that long. Yeah. And I wonder how weird you'd get. Oh, I bet. Just loopy. Super weird. Yeah. 
like super goofy. If your personality be, completely mm-hmm. changes. You'd be seeing things. <laughs> but when I was young, I could stay up forever and with drinking. And the cheese face story, if you don't know it, this was up at St. Cloud State. I just stayed awake for like a day and a half just because I could. And I didn't want the party to end. And I'm drinking and drinking and drinking. But of course, eventually, your body just gives in. And I hit a massive wall. And I sat down on a couch at this beer party. And I fell completely unconscious. And I became a centerpiece for hijinks at this beer party because there I was. I mean, you could have picked me up and thrown me out a window. I wouldn't have woken up. But what the folks did was they took a big jar of cheese whiz and they put it in the microwave and warmed it up. And then they let it cool and they poured it slowly and carefully over the top of my head and it created a perfect cheese mask over my face that's good (laughs) and they cut out a hole for my eyes and i believe a hole for my mouth so i could breathe and then the cops came to the party and the cops were all standing (laughs) around me trying to figure out what had happened (laughs) one of the cops said to somebody at the party what the hell happened to this guy if that would have happened to your buddy big al would they have cut the hole for the mouth so he could continue to drink? Oh, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tree Master Jesus said 42 is his record. And he said, but he did end up sleeping for 12 hours after that. And ooh, was he giggly, he said. Oh, yeah. uh, Josh, uh, back to what you were saying about like how you would wonder if you'd go insane. I think... I think at like 26 or 27 hours, I started like crying for no reason. I became <laughs> super sensitive. Like everything made me want to just ball my eyes out. Here's the deal. An 80-year-old farmer in Vietnam, his name is Ty. He says he hasn't slept in 60 years. <laughs> All the stretch. Right. And he's also more or less said that it ain't no thing but a chicken wing on a string from Burger King. He and other folks who know Ty say his insomnia hasn't affected his life negatively at all. He's very famous in Vietnam. One of the local papers did a story on how he doesn't need any sleep. His family, his old lady, his ungrateful kids, his friends, they all insist that they've never seen him sleep. And like I mentioned, Ty says he's doing all right. He's never had a real problem from being unable to fall asleep. He tells the story that he came down with a severe fever when he was a 20-year-old kid, and it was the fever that left him unable to sleep again. He tried medications, wacky remedies, heavy drinking to try and fall asleep. None of it works. He thought when he was young, he thought this was just going to be temporary, but now he's gone ahead and lived six effing decades without so much as a damn cat nap on the couch. Folks in Vietnamski, they call him a miracle. They, some claim he has a real superpower. Think how productive you could be. Mm. Man, you could get so much done. Now leave it to doctors, of course, who have no idea what they're talking about. (laughs) Doctors who know about old sleepless Ty here, they say he might be getting some Z's, but he doesn't know it. One doctor in Australia said that some insomniacs lack the ability to tell the difference between being awake and being asleep. So Ty could be falling asleep for short periods of time during the day, (laughs) and he just doesn't know it. (laughs) And these little power naps could be enough to keep him going. I can understand that. I have trouble sleeping at night, and I have since I was a kid. And there are plenty of times, even this week, there was a time where I really couldn't tell if I fell asleep or not. Yeah. I could not tell if I was asleep or awake. I I have had sleep issues my whole life, and and that's familiar to me, at least. That doesn't happen to me very often, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. You'd think, wait... I think I slept. Last I think I slept, mm-hmm. but you're not really. You're yeah, not I kind of remember asleep. a lot, though. Mm-hmm. Hate that feeling. Sleepless Ty, the Vietnamese guy. He isn't the only person <laughs> to claim to suffer from decades long insomnia. There's a Chinese woman out there who says she hasn't gone seepy nine eyes 
for 40 years. So I think she and Ty should... It's too bad they didn't hook up and have a litter of non-sleeping zombie babies that could roam around town and terrify everybody. (laughs) It could be buddies, yeah. You know, like late-night phone calls and stuff. I bet it does get a little lonely after a while. Mm Ooh-wee. It's not my fault Jesus said his nephew just made it through Hell Week for Navy SEALs training. Oh, God. He was only able to sleep for a total of four hours and five and a half days. Oof. No. Four hours? In a total of five, five and a half, and, a half and you're working your and ass off. They're, they're yeah. beating you basically yeah. into submission. Have you seen some of that? I've that seen it in the is. movies. That's impressive. That's awful. I've seen uh, what was that? Uh, what was that one where uh, Demi Moore was uh, topless in the shower? G.I. And that, Jane. Yeah. I like that. That's what you got out of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty poignant. Everything that's happening, but I remember Demi Moore was topless. <laughs> If you're a Navy SEAL, you never have to buy another drink in your life, right? That's how it should be. That's the way I understand it. Hmm. Boy, a lot, a, there's a few people who have stayed up three days in a row. A lot of plow drivers. Oh. And I'd imagine, man, there was a couple times this last year, remember, they mm-hmm. we'd hear from some of you, and uh, I feel for you. That Please. was... Stay awake for two days. They yeah. come home just burping up Mountain Dew and sunflower seeds. This is nice. This next stupid news story, I think. A Ukrainian helicopter crew has uh, told the local papers over there that women in their country have been flashing them they boobs and such as they fly overhead to help boost their morale while they're fighting these idiot Russians. How many times, if you're a pilot, would you say, ah, I forgot something back at base? (laughs) (laughs) Zigzagging back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The pilot of this Ukrainian helicopter, he did all the talking in this article. He said his crew has saved the GPS locations of places where they'd get flashed so they can come back. (laughs) That's hilarious. As you can imagine, this has been a demoralizing operation for the fellas. And little silly moments like a set of boobs being thrown their way has been enough to pick up their spirits during some really dark times. One woman even proposed marriage to them by holding up a sign as they whipped by. They fly daily missions. They're going this way. They're going that way. On their way to their missions, this is interesting. Well, first off, they they try to keep their conversations light and positive. They like to interact with civilians on the ground. They recently threw a bottle of hooch out the helicopter to an old-timer who was hanging out in one of the more war-torn parts of town. Here you go, granddad. You need this more than we do. So these kind of interactions are more possible because they fly. This is the interesting part to me. They fly the helicopters very low to avoid Russian air defenses, sometimes just 15 feet off the damn ground. But the whole thing, you know, it's such unnecessary nonsense. It's nice to learn that they're able to have something good happening. Yeah, absolutely. A set of cans always pick my spirits up, Cubby. Uh, I can understand why. You know, if... I was watching uh, G.I. Jane one night. (laughs) (laughs) I heard about that. If anyone in the military ever wanted to see my penis, which I despise, you wouldn't like it, but if it would help morale in any way... I would whip it out, for sure. That's what you can do for your country. I, that's about as far as it goes. <laughs> as far as my bravery. <laughs> mm. It would take a lot for me to do it, but I would do it. If I could fit an American flag on it, I would. <laughs> <laughs> but that pole's not long enough to support a flag. Even a mini flag that you might put in a drink. Couldn't do it. <laughs> All right, here's another report that insists soon enough... AI-powered sex robots will completely eliminate our need to pump away on fellow human beings. And we'll all, soon enough, just be raw dog and robots. <laughs> I'm really all for this. Yeah. Yeah, why not? We've heard all of this before. This time we're hearing from a former senior executive at Google, if that means anything to you or not. I don't know. They probably know a thing or two about technology. He goes by the name of Mo. <laughs> He was the chief business officer for Google's clandestine research and development arm X. If anyone has any idea what that means. Those sound like smart words. Here we go again. Mo says AY. AY isn't a thing. What did I say? AI. AI. Sorry. 
AI will usher in a, quote, redesign of love and relationships, meaning that people won't be able to tell the difference between a real-life sexual encounter and an artificially created sexual encounter. Human beings will soon be able to simulate sex through virtual reality and augmented reality headsets such as Apple's Vision Pro or something called a Quest 3. Mo says the headsets combined with AI-powered bots will trick people into thinking that the sex robot is real. Does anyone understand what he's saying exactly? Because mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you, you do. That you guys have said before, those that have tried it, and uh, I have a friend who has tried this as well, that virtual reality porn, just watching it, said how it's almost too realistic what yeah. you're looking at. And it's disorienting, you said. I, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, the first time I saw it, I you you were watching me when I first put on a, <laughs> a what did you call the item? Uh, AI, what are those things VR called again? Headset? VR headset. VR headset. VR headset. Thank yeah. you. The first time I put one on, I backpedaled in my chair. Yeah. <laughs> because I was surprising. convinced there were three naked college girls uh, standing right in front of me preparing to please me orally. I backpedaled. It was so real. But what this guy's talking about is hooking things up to your brain. So you got the headset on. They hook something up to your brain. Hmm. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I suppose if you've got circuits hooked up to your brain, you'll have no choice to believe whatever is being sent to your brain is real. Yeah. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That's true. Nick, do, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, do we have, like, uh, sex toys that can, like, Bluetooth to the VR headset? So it's like... You know, it simulates what the girl's doing in the video. Yeah, I've heard there's sex toys that do that. Mm -hmm. Insane. Yeah. I'll, I'll be the first to fold a hot robot lady. I will. Somebody build me a hot robot lady. I'll show that robot how to bump. Why not? <laughs> I mean, I think there's, there'd be a lot of valid reasons for that. Yeah. You know? I mean, you're probably not going to get an STD for one. Sometimes the libidos of a relationship don't line up, mm -hmm. and then the person mm -hmm. can take care of that. And I Maybe probably you're, you're unlucky in love. Sure. I probably won't live long enough for all of this to become, you know, a thing. Oh, I bet it'll be pretty close. Oh, oh you think yeah. so? Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think we're too far away. I, I, I can't picture myself going through the trouble of hooking little sticky things up to my skull so it can read my brain. Oh, it, you know what I'm talking about? Doesn't yeah. that sound like a hell of a process? Well, because... I got to tell you, one of the funnier moments in Quarterback on Netflix where it followed. Uh, Kirk, Kirk Cousins, Cousins watching VR porn. No, he's not watching <laughs> VR porn. That'd be cool. There's, that's one guy that'll never watch VR porn. <laughs> yep. But Kirk Cousins, a part of it, if you haven't seen it yet, so is a tweet from Dana, also a part of it. True story. But he, I cracked up because, you know, he's so goofy. By the way, I fell in love with him, and a lot of people did after watching this. He came across so, so good in this thing. But he, he's sitting down. Nick, you, you'd love this. He puts on these, like, electrodes... On his head, if that's the right term, right? He puts on all these different electrodes. Sure, they're sticking to his skull. Yep, he's yes. sticking to his skull. And he is watching a video. And what happens is it, it's for concentration. So if the video dims or flickers, it means he's not concentrating on this video. I mean, this is how oh, wow. much effort Jesus, he puts in. You know, he puts in this. I'd never even heard of something like this. No, so nuts. you can kind of watch it dimming sometimes, and then it helps him focus and get better. That's bizarre. <laughs> I, it, it doesn't look the, the coolest. Does, how does it know that your brain is losing? You know, I don't that, know. That's insane that's to me scary. that doctors can stick things to your skull and, and read what your brain is doing or not doing. If you do understand all this, I've got a little more. Earlier this year, some Snapchat influencer babe called Karen Marjorie. She created a chat GTP powered doppelganger of herself that talks dirty to fellas online. Guys are paying a dollar a minute to talk with it. Nice. So it's and an it's not AY. She AI. create again with the sorry, AI. She created a robot version of her of herself and have you seen some of those Guys AI are, versions of, like, a YouTuber or no. something like that? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. insane. Guys are talking dirty to this role. You know, I, I once dated a gal. Lily was her name. She would take a book and underline the F scenes for me. I wasn't impressed. I said to my hockey coach, I said, they teach underlining in college. And my hockey coach said, not the F scenes, they don't. 
And then he told me I have to learn to loosen up a little. He was right. That is good advice. Loosen up. Everybody should loosen up. Would anybody be upset if their partner banged an AI robot? Would you consider it cheating? Are you kidding me? Of course not. Yeah, okay, I'm just making sure. Can you describe this robot? <laughs> I'm, I'm just making sure. Does it look like it Demi behind... Moore and G.I. Jane? <laughs> if he did, did it behind my back, I'd be a little weirded out. I'd be like, I don't know about you. If he was like, I'd be I banging like, a robot on the yeah, side. Yeah, I'd be like, what uh, What else are you hiding, man? I would like, I'd, I'd like to be aware of it before okay. it happened. I'd like no. to join. I'd be a little pissed. I'd be like, really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Screw me. You know how sometimes I like the comments in these stories. And uh, after all that I've said, hopefully I said it accurately because I have no idea what I'm talking about. All of this information I've tossed your way about AI robot banging and hooking up sensors to your brain. And One comment here grabbed my attention where somebody who read this story said... The world goes deeper <laughs> into the abyss every day. I do not relate to it any longer. And I understand what they're saying. Do I have time here, Cubby, to talk about this cosmetic urgery? If not, we'll make time. Cosmetic surgery. Lots of folks are signing up for that. You go ahead and get some new cans, a new nose, lips, ass cheeks, eyelids. Some dudes get their balls ironed. Oh, yeah. yeah I know right. somebody I that... I forgot about that. Maybe that doesn't fall under cosmetic surgery. Just so you know, some dudes are getting their balls ironed. I know someone who does that as, as part of their job. They they iron balls. Mm. Ooh, the lips thing is so popular now um, that you see it a lot. You do. Do you guys notice that? Yeah. Oh, what yeah. are we... What are you like, talking about? Enhancing somebody's lips? Yeah. Yep. Oh, like fillers? Lip fillers? Every time I see a famous lady on television, it appears to me that they've... I was watching the Kardashians on TV the other day. Oh, Lord. But even non-vapid people that you just run in, in oh, on the yeah. street. Oh, yeah. regular My girlfriends mm -hmm. have it done, yeah. No, yeah. I don't notice that in regular people. My girlfriend. But then again, I hang out at the American Legion in YZ, so My... I don't think there's many uh, uh, lip-enhancing people over there. My girlfriend's an esthetician, so she sh shoots Botox, fillers, and does all that stuff. Really? That's yeah, cool. does... Um, Removal of hair, hair removal. Removal like, of intimate, hair, intimate otherwise hair? known as yes. hair removal. Yeah, yeah. Anywhere. My uh, my sister in law does all that kind of stuff. Yeah, a lot of girls <laughs> doing armpit hair. Oh, that'd be nice. I had some colon filler. Mm. Oh yeah, my! Just, it really makes it pop. I'll be your, <laughs> I'll be your colon filler. So here's the deal. Here's a brand new one for you. Well, it was new to me. It's called a vampire facial for the penis. Men are paying thousands of dollars to have needles stuck into their wangs to add a little, bex a little uh, extra heat, a little extra bulge to their by God uh, peckers. I've had a needle stuck there. It's not as bad as you'd imagine. Oh, yeah? For a medical procedure. It's called a Priapus shot or just a pea shot. It's so hot right now. <laughs> uh, at least among, as they say here in the story, it's popular amongst the elite people of New York. And as you already know, it doesn't get any more elite than that. Oh, yeah. If you're rich and from New York, well, you couldn't possibly be more important and influential, right? Word is the uh, elite and, and very likely unsufferably douchey rich New York bros are taking this Johnson shot so they can fill out a pair of swim trunks a little better than usual for their summer vacation to a place they call here the Hamptons. That's where the ritzy people go. Mm -hmm. One urological surgeon, who probably has Josh's number, uh, by the name of David Schusterman, told the New York Post, these guys in the Hamptons love to skinny dip at night and they don't want to come up short. <laughs> Dr. Dave says he first started dumping this shot into dudes' penises back in 20 plus 18 to help patients with their erectile dysfunction. And he noticed that when he gave them the shot, it made a dong a little bigger. Now, I don't know what this means here, but I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway. Dr. Dave said, it's like a vampire facial for the penis, uh, he told the local news. Uh, this gimmick involves taking blood from the patient's arm to isolate platelet rich plasma and then injecting this plasma into a schwannstucker using a tiny needle we take your blood we spin it we inject it right back and the end result is a boost to your circulation stimulation of blood vessel growth it helps improve the blood vessels 
So you not only have better blood flow to the penis during sex, but it improves the size. It makes a fuller-looking penis because it improves the blood vessels down in your penis. Gross! <laughs> you get improvement in sex and in size. It, it uh, kills shrinkage, he says. That is a concern. Guys get in the water. Their penises typically shrink. That won't happen here because it's full of the in, the injections. That's a co common knowledge, right, Ashley? You understand yeah. that shrinkage? Definitely, yes. Yeah, Seinfeld kind of helped put it on the map in the 90s. He did. It can add uh, well, 1.25 inches of extra heat to your hang down. That's a decent amount. Yeah. It only Shoot, costs... If I could double the size of my penis, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> it only costs $10,000. Oh, that's nothing. You get a series of five shots administered every month or so. The procedure lasts 30 minutes. 30 minutes of a needle in your... <sighs> According to Dr. Dave, there are no downsides or risks to this except the cost. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Holy cow, 10 grand. There's another doctor out there named Dr. Rowe. He offers a different kind of penis enlargement. He injects some kind of dermal filler. He wants $5,000. So how, do how does a grown person say that? He wants $5,000 in trade for that. The doctors say, I have guys stop in to fill up before the weekend. Oh, that's weird. It's like packing your suitcase. You fill up your suitcase, why not fill up your penis? The bulk of these suckers, I mean clients, are single guys in their 30s and 40s, and doctors say that their confidence goes through the effing roof once they see what they're hauling around after that needle stabs them. I'll be damned. Well, I don't know. If I had an extra ten grand to spend, yes, I don't know that I'd put that money there. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Better uses that cash. But if you're filthy rich, you know what the hell? I don't know. Sports. On the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. But going forward. Look oh. out, Jody Reed. God, there you go. Don't rub it. Jody just saved you guys, didn't he? God dang. Oof. I remember Jody Reed when he was a player for the Red Sox back in the day. Now he's is a first or third base third coach? Third base coach. Third base coach for Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. uh, Correct? I uh, know the Marlins. Marlins. Oh, yeah. I knew it was one of those Florida teams. That poor bastard got hit by a line drive last night. The baseball broke his leg for him. Oh, can you imagine how oh, much that must have hurt? Oh, that hurt. Oh, no, have you ever, like, fathom. I don't know, if just banged the front of your uh, leg on something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like what? the bed frame or something. Oh, oh. My, oh no. Uh, Back in the day when you'd be biking and it would spin back and the pedals would oh, hit you in the shit. Dude, oh, that the stuff would make you just want to throw your bike across yep. the street. That's pretty bad, but I think the worst is when you kick that friggin' trailer hitch. Oh, man. No. I Hands remember I, somebody put uh, a trailer hitch here in this building on a Ford Focus. And I was infuriated. <laughs> it's dark. I didn't see it. And I thought, no, I've never seen somebody put a trailer hitch on a Ford Focus. Right. That's not fair. Uh -huh. That's not even my fault. That's <laughs> their fault. When, you're, when your shin bone hits that receiver or the hitch or whatever, oh, that's, that's where you wish you were dead. Jody Reed, his leg is broken by a line drive last night in a baseball game. I missed all the drama. Yeah, right. I missed all the drama in the latter parts of last night's Twins game. I had to hit the sack, by God. When I hit it, the Twins were up 3-1. Missed all the late-inning drama. It was a night for the strudel. Max Kepler hit a dong, scored the go-ahead run on a pass ball in the eighth inning. Twins beat the Mariners 6-3. They got one more today. We'll tell you all about last night's game here in about a half hour, including some further baseball news. Um, can't wait to find out what Randy Shaver thinks of this. A New York Yankee player killed a fan last night in Anaheim uh, at the ballpark. We'll get to that as well. Josh's news is coming up next. Tap-assed morning show. 69. <laughs>
this show suck. Who are you, fart knockers? 93X. CJ Ham for standard heating and air conditioning. When I'm on the field, I can take anything. But at home with my family, we like everything to be comfortable. That's why I trust the pros at Standard. They've been keeping Minnesotans like me comfortable for over 90 years. Is your cooling system making strange noises or not cooling properly? Don't wait for an AC breakdown this summer. Get a free in-home estimate with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Schedule your appointment today at standardheating.com. Are you currently enjoying the show on the Stitcher app? Then you need to know Stitcher is going away on August 29th. Yep. Going away, as in kaput, gone, dead. Rest in peace, Stitcher, and thanks for 15 years of service to the podcast community. So switch to another podcast app and follow this show there. Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Half-Assed Morning Show. 93X. We never knew what was in it. I mean... It just shocks me. It's a shock. When I heard this, this, you just never know who your neighbor is anymore. When FBI agents served a federal search warrant at a Kentucky apartment, they said they discovered dozens of human bones inside. Oh, no. Some of which were being used as furniture. Oh, Oh, no. I've got a bone you can sit on. According to the complaint, (laughs) James Knott was part of a ring of people purchasing and selling stolen human remains, some of which (laughs) tied back to that Harvard medical scandal we talked about a bit ago. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. The grisly discovery included hip bones and spinal cords, which were being used as decorations and furniture. That's so gross. I know. (laughs) They also described as many as 40 skulls. One of them had a scarf tied around its neck. Oh, and fancy. Another found on the bed where the man slept. The complaint goes on to say that when an FBI agent asked Not if anyone else was inside the apartment, Not replied, only my dead friends. Oh. Investigators said he used the name William Burke on Facebook to sell the items. And he had, uh, there was a person he sold to named Jeremy Pauly. The investigation began after authorities received a tip about possible human remains inside of Pauly's Pennsylvania home. Their agents found human remains, including organs and skin. The FBI said Polly was in communication with an employee at a mortuary in Little Rock, Arkansas, who was stealing remains that were supposed to be cremated and then selling them to Polly. Mm-hmm. It was Polly who told agents about a network of stolen remains. Another individual suspected to be in the network was a man named Cedric Lodge, the manager at the morgue of the Harvard Medical School Anatomical Gift Program. Uh, so, yeah, they, uh, again... again 40 skulls, hips, spinal cords. This dude wasn't killing anybody. No, he was just buying them, you know, I guess black market body parts. Oh. And he referred to, them, referred to them as his friends. His dead friends. Uh, he's different. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, you different know. kind of a hobby. Who am I to judge? But you're right. That is different. One more skeletal story for you this morning. In August. Then Wake Forest quarterback Sam Hartman needed to have a rib removed. Uh, he had to have the rib closest to a, his collarbone removed because he was having blood clot issues. Oh. According to ESPN, Hartman, now a six-year senior who transferred to Notre Dame, said his mom had the removed rib in the family's refrigerator because she's having it made into a necklace. That's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That necklace will be ready within a few weeks. <laughs> A man and another person were arrested following a BB gun shootout with minors, which erupted following an argument on social media. That other person that was arrested with the man was his mom. 18-year-old Luis Hernandez was taken into custody following a months-long investigation over BB gunfire, which broke out in Connecticut in February. Police responded to a disturbance involving 10 people at 10.52 p.m where Hernandez, his 42-year-old mother Mary, and a second male arrived at a home in the area following an online spat with a bunch of minors. Hernandez allegedly instigated a fight with the kids and fired at their house. Regardless of if it is real or fake or just a BB gun, in today's day and age, this should be taken serious. Shooting someone with a firearm of any type uh, is a felony, number one, and secondly, it's extremely dangerous. Police noted the man accompanying Hernandez and his mother didn't get involved in the fight, and the trio quickly fled the scene before police arrived. Uh, mommy was arrested and charged with breach of peace and risk of injury to a minor. Luis was also charged with breach of, breach of, uh, breach of peace sorry, and risk of injury to a minor, along with several other charges. He's due back in court at the end of the month. 
But mom was the one who instigated this BB gun fight? Well, he instigated it, but mom was all about it. Mom was involved. (laughs) Good move, mom. That brings me back to seventh grade, the old BB gun fights, right? Well, then we actually had some in our 40s up in Hayward, Wisconsin. (laughs) Kind of pathetic, but uh, it happened. Dashcam footage captured the moment a driver in Australia swerved into oncoming traffic to save a child's life. Lori Owens was traveling along an Adelaide highway when he noticed a young boy, still in his diaper, wandering under the road as cars passed. He quickly sprang into action, hopping the center median and racing to the other side of the road, bringing his car into the path of oncoming traffic in an effort to shield the boy from getting hit. I just happened to notice a little toddler, probably yay high, just on the medium strip. I'd rather take the damage of a car running to me because I'm safe rather than the child be killed because what protection did the child have? Startled by the car, the little boy ran toward a nearby home with Owens exiting his vehicle to help the kid find his parents. We didn't know whether the kid lived there or not and uh, went in to see the people inside and sure enough, it was their child and the gates were left wide open and he was out on the road. Who the hell's leaving their baby on the freeway? Yeah, well, I, they didn't know the kid got out. The boy's mother said she had no idea how he managed to get out of their home and onto the road. <laughs> But said, of course, she's very grateful to Owens, who was there to help her son. Son of a bee, that's a close one. Yeah, kids even... Can... Go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, kids can be um, escape artists, that's for sure. Yeah, and in this case, certainly true. And, um, you know, the video, it, it's scary, even though you know the ending mm-hmm. there. But uh, scary to think that kid... I mean, if, if Owens wasn't there, what could have happened? <laughs> Criminal charges have been filed against an 18-year-old woman who allegedly threw a lit firework into dry grass, igniting a blaze that destroyed a St. Paul apartment building, leaving about 40 people homeless. Police and fire crews were dispatched to the apartments about 4.15 p.m. July 8th after reports of a grass fire which spread to a building. What started as a small grass fire grew to a larger grass fire, caught a bush or the landscaping on fire, which then started sending embers up to the roof line and the overhang of the building caught the roof line on fire and then it got into the attic and ran through the whole building. It took crews five hours to knock down the fire, which caused an estimated $2 million in damage to the structure. It was determined a total loss. Investigators located a resident with video showing a small grass fire with two females trying to pour water on it. The fire is seen spreading to a larger area, eventually starting the entire building on fire. The resident said five minutes prior to the fire, they heard fireworks going off. When questioned by detectives, the 18-year-old apparently said it was not intentional, but admitted to lighting off fireworks she had purchased for a party. Mm. Then in Elmdale, Minnesota, the Morrison County Sheriff's Office said approximately 5.41 p.m. Tuesday, they received a report of a fire at a church. Upon further investigation, it appears a 12-year-old may be responsible for that blaze. Oh, no. (laughs) Jesus Christ. (laughs) That kid is grounded. A Florida woman's accused of stealing a fire truck and claiming to be a volunteer firefighter. A 44-year-old named Belinda was taken into custody Saturday after officers were called to a volunteer fire department where the volunteer fire chief alleged that Belinda, who spent the night at the station, was missing along with the truck. A police officer located her and the stolen truck about 10 miles away where it ran out of gas. The woman didn't want him to be suspicious, so she pretended to be a volunteer firefighter out on the job. (laughs) But the officer was suspicious and didn't believe her story. When questioned at the scene, she reportedly claimed she was a volunteer with the department. She is not. She was arrested and charged with grand theft and impersonating a firefighter. Chicks are starting to do this now. I guess guess so, so, yeah. Dudes are usually the morons who are out pretending to be cops and such. Now we got gals doing it. A California woman is regretting taking balls down her throat. She's (laughs) suing a Central California Thai restaurant claiming an appetizer called Dragon Balls it was so spicy she suffered chemical burns to her vocal cords, esophagus, and right nostril. Mm. The suit names the restaurant and its owner, along with the chef who cooked the item, the waitress who took the order, and anyone at the restaurant that day or before. <laughs> On Monday, a supervisor said the restaurant had never previously had a patron say they'd been burned by a dish and <laughs> needed medical attention, but the woman claims her throat and voice have incurred permanent injuries and will forever be damaged. Dr. Kelly Johnson Arbor, a physician at the Washington, D.C.-based National Capital Poison Center, said eating Thai chilies, spicier than cayenne peppers, but not as spicy as habaneros, can irritate the mouth and throat and cause nausea and heartburn, but said they're not associated with permanent tissue damage. 
Even so, the lawsuit seeks unspecified damages plus medical expenses and compensation for purported lost earnings. She's going to sue, what did you say? Everybody, <laughs> everybody, who's ever made, yeah. everybody who's ever made it in the history of time yeah. is going to be sued. She named, she named everybody in the lawsuit. It's <laughs> amazing. You know what I ate last night, Josh? What's that? Uh, I ate, uh, what do they call that? Uh, 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 wa wa wabasi? Wasabi. 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 Oh, I love That's wasabi. That's spicy. What'd you I, think? Well, I'd had it before on Funyuns. Oh, I love the wasabi. Have you great. ever had the wasabi almonds? No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I, I put a little bit of that wabasi on my uh, on my uh, fried rice at a joint last night, and it, you know it, I don't normally like hot stuff, but I thought it was a lot of fun. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I like it when it's you're almost tearing up. I love that. Oh, wasabi. I don't go that far. It's okay. Yeah, mix it with soy sauce. Oh, that's a good stuff. Mm. Right I don't there. like that stupid soy sauce. What? Well, what? I, I didn't know anybody didn't like soy Insane. sauce. It's Hater. stupid. Really, you don't like it? Huh? Nope. Crazy. What other stupid thing don't you like? Well, it, it counts as a condiment. So, you know, I hate most condiments. Well, I mean, can't we put uh, soy sauce in the same uh, neighborhood as, you know, other Mayonnaise? condiments? I don't know. All right, well, whatever. I hate, even, Generally speaking, I don't like condiments. You guys know that. Do you not like condiments because the word condom is in it? And you that could be part those? of it. <laughs> After almost a year of investigating, the Polk County Sheriff's Office found an alleged gasoline thief who stole about 80 gallons of fuel from a Florida business. On July 11th last year, the owner of Lake Wales Flooring on Highway 27 reported gasoline had been stolen from his heavy equipment. Deputies said the owner found about 70 gallons of fuel had been siphoned from a box truck parked in front, another 10 siphoned out of a forklift parked at the side of the building. According to the sheriff's office, a garden hose at the scene was examined, and just last month, investigators matched DNA with the suspect, a 21-year-old named Chase Lynn. What? They see us hide it. <laughs> I'm surprised they even showed up. Man, Polk County Sheriff's Office, they do protect and serve. I guess get so. Up. Also in Florida, a sheriff's office announced last Thursday they were searching for two women caught stealing lawn flamingo. I'm sorry, peacocks. Peacock lawn, decorations. Lawn peacock decorations. Yes, they are on the hunt for these women. I wonder why the why are you stealing lawn peacock decorations? Just to be they did find the decorations. Thank God. They did. Uh, I don't know. Maybe trying to be funny? I'm not sure. Well, F me running. Cincinnati police are looking for a man who recently posed as a parking attendant at a soccer game, and he got away with thousands. Authorities released pictures of the suspect they believe posed as an attendant July 9th at the Free Store Food Bank between 2 and 3 p.m. The building was vacant, but owners allowed the surrounding space to be rented out as a parking lot to third-party company Tri-State Parking. We worked with Tri-State Parking. They said, yeah, they'd come in, they'd operate it for us, they'd give us a little bit of money back. So the money that we got in was able to help us feed kids. That's right. That's the money he stole. <laughs> Before Tri-State Tri Parking employees arrived at the lot, the suspect lured drivers to park in the location to attend the FC Cincinnati game. Tri-State came in here and saw that their entire parking lot was full. They could have uh, probably accumulated about uh, $1,600 in a very short period of time because my understanding was that they were selling parking spaces for about $40 a, a car. Oh, Price State charges 25 bucks a car. Basically set up fake cones, fake uh, tickets, and sold out the entire parking lot four or five hours before the game even started. Yeah, so if you missed it, the guy was charging 15 bucks more than they would have been charging. So he would go ahead and park the car. Well, he would tell people where he'd point it out. Yeah, oh, you park. Oh, uh, I just, see. I just not need like this a valet. Not yeah. like a valet, just an attendant. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, park over there. Hand me forty dollars. Yep. That's and, and good way, lord. This all goes to charity, so feel good about it. Yep. <laughs> God, the balls on that effing guy. They got him. Uh, well, they're looking for him. Uh, yeah, at least they, as of press time, they were. So it's possible maybe they have him now. But they believe he got away with about two grand. Dan. He's at the strip joint. <laughs> The Shaver Shuffle 5K is back next month. That's a charity you can get behind. An annual benefit for the Randy Shaver Cancer Research Fund. Join them Saturday, August 5th, 9 a.m. in Plymouth, or sign up to run virtually any day in the month of August. It's a fun event. I've done it every year, um, either there or virtually. All participants will be entered into a drawing for a pair of Apple AirPod Pros, along with, along with prizes for winners in several categories. Check out our website for more information and to register now through August 3rd. Randy going to be there? He never shows. He never does, does <laughs> it's he? It's weird. His name's in it. He's never once. 
Former NBA star with the Miami Heat, Ray Allen, who you may also know, uh, know as Jesus Shuttlesworth in Spike Lee's movie, He Got Game. Sure. 48 today. Pearl Jam guitarist, Stone Gossard. 57. Happy 33rd birthday to I Like Turtles, Jesus. And that's 93X News. Care 11's Randy Shaver. On the half assed Morning Show. What's up, Twin Cities? This is Jimmy Butler. You're listening to the half assed Morning Show on 93X. Man, what an unreal experience. Uh, first of all, besides getting hit in the face with a shoe, uh, which was probably my, my favorite part of the whole thing. Who throws a shoe? Honestly. That fing shoe comes off. That, 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 ain't, that ain't Bob Schnuckers, Paul. Here's Randy Shaver. Hello, Good Randy. Good morning. My God, Jimmy Butler got hit in the face with a shoe while he was <laughs> hanging out in China. He no. took it in such a cute way, too. Yeah, he did. Just smiling instantly. Like, did I just get hit by a shoe? <laughs> Jimmy Bottles, Randy. What's he doing over in China? An attention tour. Uh, okay. That's what I understand it to be. He's just walking around China and hoping that people fawn all over him, and, and they have been. I, I got you. Yeah, I don't. That's it. Anyone else have any uh, clue what he's doing there? Well, no. Nope. Being a tourist. To put it. I, like yeah. to do, I like to do that in Maple Grove. I like to walk around. <laughs> well, we Maple saw Grove. how much they love you in Maple Grove a number yeah. of years ago, didn't we, John? Oh, my goodness. A lot of animal print, really tight dresses showed up that day. <laughs> Randy won't mind if we tell this story again. This is quite a few years ago. You were doing some kind of a food fundraiser, weren't you, Randy? I was. Care 11 um, food fight. The Care 11 food fight, Wapple says. Is that an accurate statement, Randy? That is, that is correct. Uh, Thanksgiving thing? Oh, yeah. It, it was around Thanksgiving. Yeah, yes. yeah I worked with Derek Perkins Perkins. during that. Pardon me, Dana? I worked with Eric Perkins while he was involved in that, too. Oh, that must have sucked. <laughs> Working with Eric Perkins? No, no, I love Perkins. He's such a prick. <laughs> um, you know, Perkins was one of those guys where we really enjoyed hanging out with, but we were always a little worried we were going to get in some trouble with Eric Perkins. <laughs> right. He's different. He He's very influential, and he can get you to do some stuff you might not be comfortable doing normally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So... Randy and uh, Eric Perkins and uh, Jillian uh, Von Hausenberg. Yep. Uh, 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 Julie Nelson, sorry. Um, and Belinda, I think. Uh, the, the, That's correct. The, they were uh, competing as to who could raise the most food for charity. So Randy had us come out and hang out with him at a grocery store in Maple Grove. And Randy's out front the grocery store greeting people as they're they go into the grocery store, buy some food, and then hand it to Randy. Here, here's our donation. I hope you beat Julian and Eric and uh, and Berlin. And uh, Josh and I are standing around. Was it not a limousine? Yes. A limousine mm -hmm. pulls up, and this was like a White Snake music video. <laughs> it was. The women who stepped out of this limousine, I suppose I should say, looked like they were headed to a White Snake concert. <laughs> Tight dresses, really tight. Done up, the hairdo and the makeup. I mean, and keep in mind again, this is a grocery store. Yeah, yes. they're pulling. It in a, this in wasn't a nightclub. Yeah, this wasn't a nightclub. But they made themselves out to be as sexy as possible to go see the ass man at the grocery store. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Right, Randy. Well, as I've often said, if you've got it. <laughs> and everything Randy said, they were laughing hysterically. Uh, yes. <laughs> Randy, I can Here's some chili and some ramen. <laughs> you know, that's crazy. Yeah, you're not kidding. They pulled up in a limousine. That's amazing. It's the only time I've ever been jealous of you. <laughs> yes. For real, isn't Butler there to promote the NBA in China? Isn't that the gist, or is it is it something else? I really thought. I think it's just Jimmy Bottles uh, looking for. Uh, for action. Okay. I don't think the NBA is in China right now trying to promote the NBA. Oh, uh, yeah, that's just what I had read, so I was curious if... My damn, it looked, to me, it looked to me like he was uh, hanging around a, 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 a park. He shot some hoops, and then the whole neighborhood rushed over to see him. Yeah. And they're throwing him items to autograph, and some kid threw him a shoe, hit him right in the noggin. Jimmy Bottles was okay. He had a good sense of humor about it. Let me ask you something, Randy. We were talking about... Uh, food a couple of minutes ago do you uh do you eat wasabis is that how i say it josh you don't have to put the s at the end of it <laughs> if you, you don't want to do you eat wasabi I, I i don't know okay do you like hot stuff i i really don't I, i'm not uh, a spicy guy neither am i food neither am i by any stretch of the imagination I mean, but last night i hit some joint randy 
What were you saying? You had further. I was just, th- just going to say, I, you know, I, you, you, you learn over time what you can eat and what you can't. <laughs> <laughs> sure. And, uh, and I've learned over time that uh, there are certain things that I've, I, I just can't do. I get so. it, hundred percent, no doubt. Yep. Uh, but last night I decided to get a little fresh. I was eating some fried rice at a at a restaurant, and uh, they had a some kind of green slime sitting there on the table and I I tried a I tried a forkful of it and and I I was told it was called wasabi and uh, which I was familiar with like I told Josh earlier I'd had wasabi flavored Funyuns before which I could not stop eating I mentioned the almonds too are really good I went to Maui uh, Hawaii and you guys are thinking I didn't know you traveled out of the country but I did I went to Maui and uh, they had uh, wasabi flavored uh, funyuns at a grocery store. I couldn't stop sure. eating them. Anyway, sure. so I, I mixed some of this wasabi in with the fried rice I was eating last night. I enjoyed it. But I got a funny text message because you know what? They're kind of right. Even though I enjoyed it, this text message I think is accurate. A listener says, Wasabi, where is this text message? Here it is. Wasabi tastes like new shower curtain. <laughs> Oh, I, I don't yeah. know. But like I, I said, I've only only had it mixed with soy sauce. I've never and ginger. I've just, never had it. I've never liked it very much. So yeah, I'd say they're pretty accurate. But even though I liked it, I think that Ace Rock Nut Jeebus is remembering my dinner from last night. It does kind of taste like new shower curtain. I'm gonna have to do a side by side. Yeah. Yeah. Between old shower curtain and new shower curtain. <laughs> I'm going to walk into my favorite sushi restaurant with a shower curtain and say, all right, let's check this out. Well, wow, that, that kind of brings up a whole different conversation. What was it? A few days ago we were talking about uh, uh, who's the athlete uh, or former athlete who uh, uses the same towel for eight months straight. Uh, right. Oh, yeah, the former. Uh, what's his name? Orlovsky? Oh, yeah, the Damn. quarterback. Dan Orlovsky. Former Dan quarterback Orlovsky. Dane Orlovsky? Dan. Orlovsky. D- Dan. So, how long will you keep a shower curtain on the rod? As long as I live in the house, oh, I yeah. guess. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, you want to see an old shower curtain. Woo-wee. I got one that I bet could uh, set at least a county record. That depends. If it is one of those, if I have like the double shower curtain thing going on where you have the clear one on the right. inside, right. that thing gets changed yeah. at, at least a couple times a year. Yeah. I think it gets really? nasty. Oh, just because yeah. it's the closest to your disgusting body? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the other day, I... I noticed that uh, I cannot see at all through what was once a clear shower curtain. Now it's just white. That's probably a good time to change it. I'll change you. I missed all the drama I was saying uh, earlier. I missed all the drama the latter parts of last night's Twins game. When I hit the sack, they were up 3-1. Yeah. Ended up beating the Mariners 6-3. It was a big night for Max Kepler, the strudel. Right. Hit a dong, scored the go-ahead run on a pass ball in the eighth inning. The Twins not only struck out 14 times themselves, Randy, they struck the Mariners out 14 times. And I was going to say, Kirilov strikes out four times and then in the uh, ninth decides to hit the two-run homer to seal the game. So Mm -hmm. just goes to show you how crazy baseball can be. I mean, Kirilov was having a just a miserable night at the plate. Uh, batting in the third spot too, a place where they where they need him to be productive, and of course he comes through with the big hit. So yeah, it's a big win last night. Duran gets another save, uh, looks great, strikes out two. Maeda probably deserved a much better fate than what he got last God, night. God, he was great. Well, and Castillo was pretty solid too. I mean, it was a pretty good pitching match through the first six innings last night, um, both with quality starts and both. You know, pitch pretty solid. Yeah. Um, but the Twins are playing good baseball right now, and I hate to say it, I'm not, I'm not going to dwell on it here, but Jeez Bucks was not in the lineup again last night. So no, he, you think he's going to play today? Yeah, I think they they've given him a couple of days to kind of think about where he is and maybe trying to figure out whatever going wonky with his swing. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm sure we'll probably see. I mean, Walner wasn't much better yesterday, so we'll we'll see what happens today. Your guy last night again, Randy Julian, Eddie Julian. Man. He's got to be in a little bit in the conversation for, and you know he joined the Twins late, so 
I'm not sure he's going to be. Rookie of the year? Yeah. Eh. He's hitting 318. He's got power. Um, did you see the dong he hit last night? I did. Dude. Yeah. I he's mean, been great. He's been great. I think he's got a chance to be really good. You oh, know? yeah. I mean, he's just playing really well right now. So He had a it, couple of hits. He's had, oh, what is it, uh, six multi-hit games in the past, in the past seven. Yeah. Six out of seven. He's had uh, multi-hit games. Today, they're going to wrap it up in Seattle. Pablo Lopez and George Kirby. Should be a great pitching matchup. Again, two really good pitchers right now. So 2.30, day game, 2.30. Good. I'm sorry to have to tell you this. I know I teased this earlier. It's terrible. And I'd love to believe that we can make some changes to where something like this will never happen again. A New York Yankee player killed a fan last night in Anaheim. Uh, Yankees pitcher Tommy Canely. He threw his glove at the fan. The fan was in the Yankees' dugout. So he hits the fan squarely with his thrown glove, and then he stomped the fan to death. This was all caught on video. Uh, all we can do now is wait for the repercussions from the league. At this point, Josh, it was saw, disgusting. Josh saw the video. I mean, the, the, the bl- fan's on the ground, and he's stomping the fan. Right. And to, I mean, the, the, the blades fell off the fan. That wire cage that surrounds the, the blades uh, <laughs> it, was destroyed. It came unplugged? Yes. Did you notice that? Yes. All right, uh, say I if you fell for that. I feel like I would have heard about it if he actually yeah, did kill exactly. a fan. <laughs> you did. Well, we're very informed over here. You <laughs> fell for that. Now, he destroyed a, uh, a fan like the type that you psychomaniacs run on yourselves while you're trying to sleep. He destroyed one of those fans in the dugout. It was pretty funny. But yeah, but all the uh, headlines were, you know, he said I, something about him killing a fan. It was pretty funny. Uh. Tommy Canely was very upset, fires a glove at the fan, and then kind of destroys the fan as well. Upset with the way he pitched, and then he has a talk with the Yankee manager, Aaron Boone. Yeah, a lot saying he assaulted a fan, <laughs> beat a fan. When he was stomping on the fan, he looked he looked really pathetic, and yeah. it's, it's quite funny if you want to check that out. I'm hoping maybe third stomp he realized, boy, I'm coming across like a baby right now. <laughs> When I teased that earlier, I said, coming up later, we'll talk to Randy Shaver, and we'll obviously tell you the story of a New York Yankee who killed a fan last night. You know, some time went by. I got a text message from a listener that says, you prick, I bought it. I went and looked it up. (laughs) Did anyone see Bryce Harper's at-bat last night in the, let's see, uh, sixth inning, I think it was? Yeah. Randy? I, I did not. I am getting there right now. Bryce Harper of the Philadelphia Phillies. Had an at-bat last night against the Milwaukee Brewers. This was in the sixth inning. He's going up against a left-handed pitcher by the name of Hobie Milner. And to me and anyone else who's ever watched a baseball game, I think you'd agree. Harper had no intention whatsoever of swinging the bat at any point during that at-bat. That's interesting. Three or two. What do you think's going on here, Ben? I, I... I don't know. I don't think he saw any of those pitches the way you would want to. After the first couple pitches, I mean, it was apparent he was taking, I don't know, I guess the scouting report, where he was going with the, uh, I was going to throw four balls, four, three strikes approach. I mean, that's what it looked like. And after that, I just tried to throw fastballs down the middle after that. I guess he just stuck to a game plan and credit to him for sticking to it, I guess. Now, that's the pitcher, Milner, right there, was yeah. asked about this at bat after the game, and that's a cute line. He stuck to a game plan, <laughs> and I give credit to him for sticking to it. It's a tie game in the sixth inning. Bryce Harper's up to the plate. He's their key guy. The guy is a great hitter. He never looked as if he had any intention to engage any pitch at all in the at bat. I don't I don't know that I've ever seen that. Well, I wonder if, you know, it's a left-handed batter facing a left-handed pitcher right and, it's a, it, and Milner's got a, got a wonky windup where he it's almost sidearm kind of a pitch yeah and maybe it's one of those things where Harper just doesn't think that he has the ability to throw you know strikes consistently and maybe he's just looking to Take a walk. I I don't know. I'm watching it right now, and I just don't get it. 
Maybe he has a hard time picking the ball up, too. I don't know. Eesh. I mean, okay, if he just said to himself, if Bryce Harper just said to himself, look, uh, I'm not seeing this guy, right? You know, yeah. he's in the, he's in the uh, uh, at, what do you call the uh, on-deck circle, right? Yeah. If he was watching this Bilner warm-up or whatever and just thought, dude, I can't hit this guy, I'll just try for a walk, okay. But it just, he never got and his fine. bat off his shoulder. He never I, looked interested mm-hmm. in the at-bat. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I really, did we ever hear from Harper I don't have night? anything in front of me from Bryce Harper. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, he like it was almost like he was gonna get intentionally walked. <laughs> yeah. Like he never crouched down, you know, no. kinda yeah. at all. Right. He just kinda stood there. Ah oh, man. He, I don't know. Strange. We played the audio earlier of uh, the poor bastard third base coach for the Miami Marlins got hit by a line drive last night and it broke his leg. Oh. Oh. Going forward. Oh. Look oh. out, Jody Reed. God. There we go. Don't rub it. Jody just saved you guys, didn't he? Mm. Oh, that looked like it hurt so bad. Okay. You're going to watch I'm it? Not, that I'm not going You're to not going to watch that? No. It broke his leg for him. Jody Reed, the third base coach. I was saying earlier, I remember Jody Reed when he played for the Red Sox back in the, uh, what they called the 1990s. That sucks. Yeah. I suppose, I don't know, what what's worse? getting hit in the leg with a line drive and your leg breaks or a meth head and his son coming out the stands to beat you half to death uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. i can tell you what's a better better video that's for sure <laughs> you guys does everyone know what i'm talking about no oh, yeah. i don't oh, were yeah. they both shirtless yes they yeah. were yes mm-hmm. one of the worst things you can find on youtube and and, and obviously Okay, that's that's an overstatement. I'm sure there's some really awful things on yeah. YouTube that I'm not even familiar with. One of the worst sports-related videos. This was, I don't know, Randy, 20 years ago now? Gosh, yeah, I, probably. In Chicago, the White Sox are playing the Kansas City Royals. And you can find this on Wikipedia. By there's the way, a, it, w- it wouldn't happen today because the netting is up now. So they, true. They can't get to you. Some absolute derelict dude and his derelict son are shirtless high on everything you can imagine at the White Sox game sitting on the first baseline and they just decided father son beating time and they jump onto the field and they unmercifully beat on the old timey Royals first base coach I can't think of his name now Tom Gamboa yes that's correct luckily players pulled these scumbags off of this for, they were just high as yeah. on you know hard street drugs they were just delusional morons what the heck isn't that it, it, why not are you cool. watching it for the first time yeah just terrible Man. I think I'd rather get a line drive to the shin than have meth heads shirtless meth heads beat me on the first baseline but just oh. the most senseless awful thing. I don't know why it came to mind. I just want to kick them in their faces. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got pissed the first time I saw that. I want to take a run at these punks. Ugh. wonder whatever happened to those two friggin' garbage piles. Not much, I'm sure. By the way, for Twins fans, uh, they could reach 1,000 strikeouts this afternoon. <laughs> they oh, are all right. Something they, to watch for. They are 11 <laughs> strikeouts away from 1,000. Well, at least they're swinging the bat unless, unlike Bryce Harper last <laughs> night stood there like Wapple in slow pitch softball trying to get a walk. I was looking at I was looking at this this morning. The the Seattle Mariners have four players in like the top fifteen in strikeouts. Yeah, they strike out a lot too. Yet they are seventy no sixty strikeouts total behind the Twins. So it's the. Seattle's got the the players who strike out the most, but the Twins have a lineup. Uh, a roster that strikes out more than Seattle. So, yeah, they're 11 strikeouts away from 1,000 strikeouts. Hey, Josh. That, that, that's impressive. Josh. Yeah. Got some text message. Uh, I've received some text messages. We fooled a few people with that Yankee uh, killed the fan. Oh, that makes it fun. Yeah. Fooled Nobody f- did anything rash, did they? <laughs> um, Somebody set up a GoFundMe for the family? Oh, 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 yeah. I don't think so. Now, speaking of deranged, odd things at the ballpark, somebody was able to post a really bizarre message 
on the Jumbotron big screen setup (laughs) there at Coors Field in Denver where the Rockies play, don't you know? Okay. Normally, you look up at the big screen. Of course, they got the stats. and Maybe you'll see a marriage proposal, a birthday wish. Right. Things got weird in Denver yesterday. The Rockies were hosting the Houston Astros. I believe this was yesterday's game. And someone, I don't know how the hell you would access such a thing, but hell, I I can't even operate my television at home. Maybe it's not that difficult for you folks who know technology. Well, I think you can text in some of these. You can text yeah, it you in. Can, but I thought there'd be somebody that would vet it. You know, which right. in this case, maybe they just overlooked it or, or nobody was looking. Somehow, somebody snuck this onto the big screen. So imagine you're sitting at the ball game. And this weird message included a reference to that awful submarine tragedy from a week or so ago. So the message said this. Am I reading this? Using a stethoscope to listen to the heart, cardiologists can now detect narrow valves, valve leakage, and or abnormal rhythm, it said. Don't bother asking him to check your heart, though, Becky. That crushed Titanic sub has more life inside of it than that collapsed troll cave you call a chest cavity. Oh, my my God. Jeez. How in the world did that get on the screen? I'm looking at it right now. It's like a it's like a big te- it's like a text message. Well, yeah, Josh just said somehow it, you can It's called the uh, it's it's part of the Rockies game notes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's possible it's photoshopped, what but the I hell? I haven't seen anything saying it's fake yet. Who is this Becky and what happened? Yeah, well, I'd yeah, like to know really? her side of the story. I would like to know her side, absolutely hear her side of the story. So, there you go. I wonder what kind of punishment a person could face for such a thing. Hacking onto, do you think that ban them from the ballpark kind of a thing? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I was at a bar once that had like an LED screen where you could send a text message and it would just pop up on the bar. And that was always good for a few laughs. Would scroll. Yeah, across, nobody scroll would across. check. So unsafe. What's that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could send any message. You know, it's kind of like our thing. You know, you use a little code. You type in six four whatever, and then you know, then all of a sudden, you know, your buddy's name says like, you know, um, you know, Josh has a small wiener. You know, goes across the <laughs> screen. Why, why would you have to say that? <laughs> You're the one I was looking at while I was talking. It's the first name that came to mind. You have a very nice wiener. We've told we tell you that daily. Well, I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. In we high school, see it all the time. <laughs> In high school, we learned the code that you punch into a telephone in order to uh, fire up the uh, the intercom that goes to every <laughs> class. And the... on our last day of school, we said some things. I'll bet. Can you share anything, or is this stuff that uh, maybe ten years ago you could say, but nowadays that wouldn't work? I, I honestly, Josh, I don't remember the specifics, but it... we we said some things, and then we got away with it. This is different, but a guy we used to work with here, um, we would go out. Remember when trivia was just giant at, the, at, the, at every bar? Oh, had yeah. those little computers you bring to the table. You, it was you huge. You finger bang that little panel at, at your bar stool and play com- uh, trivia? Yeah. Sure. And then just people were really into oh, it. Well, there was a time, like you said, when it was every bar had a trivia night. It was like yeah. that golden tea. I mean, the, those mm-hmm. huge. Yeah. And so there's a guy that worked here who used to work at a bar that had that. So he knew an access code code to get into any one. All you'd need to know is the number. Like here, uh, you've got computer 13, I've got computer 69. So you look at it, you enter in the number, and you can control that controller. And so for the guys that were really into it, he'd sit there, he'd figure out what their number was, and he'd change the answer at the last second oh. and watch people freak out. <laughs> That's great. There's one guy in particular that I thought was going to kill a fan. I mean, honestly, it was ridiculous. So they'd answer Joe DiMaggio. And right. at the last second, he would change their answer to Rocky Marciano. Yeah. And, and the guy would go, wow, I didn't say Rocky Marciano. I People said- be freaking out. Oh, that's too good. Dude, that must have been a riot to watch <laughs> in person. Fu- it was funny, but I felt bad because some people, you could tell it was ruining their night. That's hilarious. Trying to figure this thing out. <laughs> yeah, we used to go up the road. Uh, Randy, we used to take the frontage road there along 394 on the, uh, what would that be? The north side of 394. We would hit uh, Cattle Company. Oh, sure. 
they had a Monday night trivia night. Oh yeah. And a dude I went to high well, school. That's a long time ago. Well, man. yeah, I'm a I'm a long time ago guy. You know that. <laughs> and uh, one of my high school buddies was a bouncer, so we knew we could get away with anything. Those were the days. Those were the days. I'm being told, Nick, via text, uh, earlier you said people might be surprised that you'd leave the country on your trip to Hawaii. Yeah. People are telling me Hawaii is part of the United States. It's a state within, it's one of the Hawaii? 50. Hawaii? Hawaii, yeah. Part of oh, the United so States. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not its own country. So they think I'm stupid or something. <laughs> yes. I'm going to fall Your for that. Your sarcasm <laughs> was not picked up on by a few texters here. Where's the sarcasm, Horn? I have no idea. Good but we, we need it badly. It's in the Where's other studio. Bit? You want me to grab it? Uh, well, maybe after the program. Okay. Don't hurt yourself. But we might Sometimes need... people don't pick it. Yeah, go grab it, Dana. Why don't you grab it? <laughs> All right, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> we, we used to always employ the sarcasm horn because some of you out there don't have much of a read on that uh, style of communication. What were you saying? What were we saying yesterday? That oh, it was we... the other day I said we were talking about corn and Nebraska, and I said... What would Nebraska know about corn? Yeah. Corn huskers, right? Quite obvious. <laughs> quite, yeah. It was quite obvious you were being sarcastic. I was laying it on as thick as I could. Yeah. But yeah, I got yelled at by someone that's like, dude, why don't you do some research? They're the corn huskers. I kind of love when that happens. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Yeah. You know what I love? I love a listener that will request a little research out of us. I love that. <laughs> do your research. How come you haven't done any research? That's I'm a lot bad. of work. I'll tell you why I'm not doing any research. Because I'm banging your mom. That's why I'm not doing any research. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That OnlyFans gal, Randy, who tried boxing and then flashed her boobs to the crowd after she won a fight, she's sure. been pulled from her next fight because of the backlash over her hauling them out. Oh, boy. I'm sure she is devastated by this. She's wiping her tears with the extra $83 million she has made in the last week or so. I don't know that to be exact. I'm just saying mm -hmm. she's an OnlyFans gal who lots of people have heard of, but not as many as after she pulled her. I'm guessing she's okay with being banned from her next fight because her OnlyFans numbers are off the uh, charts. You've seen her before, Randy. Uh, I have, yes. Um, Daniela Hemsley. All right, Randy. A little question here, a little trivia question, I guess. Right. We were just talking about trivia. Just talking about trivia. Oh, boy. I kind of wish Brad was here to make a fool out of himself on this I'm one. Glad, I'm glad Brad's not here. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. What am I saying? The first athlete to ever get a million-dollar endorsement... I'm not going to guess. I would say Michael Jordan, but I... Good guess, but that's incorrect. Okay. Why don't you just try to guess what sport the athlete was professionally involved in? The first athlete to uh... ever get a mil... Oh, God, with the gas over here, Josh. Is there anything <laughs> you can do about the gas? There's that not I... much you can do. Just let it go. Um... What sport was this individual involved in? Uh, 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 1964 was the year. What sport oh. was he involved Uh... I'll say, I'll say baseball. I don't know. That's a great guess because there was nothing hotter in America in 1964 than baseball. Right. Except for maybe the Beatles or the Rolling right. Stones. Right. The first uh, first athlete to ever get a million dollar endorsement was a and this. I almost get emotional talking about this. It was a bowler. Take that, you bottle bitch! Come on. Let's have some fun. Try that trivia question out on your bros next time you're hanging out at the beer hall. It was a bowler by the name of Don Carter. Don Carter. Oh, sure. old DC, yeah. 1964, he got a million dollar deal to endorse bowling balls from a company called Ebonite. Hmm. I wonder what a million dollars in 1964 would equate to now. Oh, That's man. Right. I'd, I'd like to do well, my own research, but I'm banging your mom. Oh, Mike. You would think it would have been Mickey Mantle when he endorsed Lucky Strike cigarettes or <laughs> sure. Muhammad Ali endorsed Wheaties or something in the 60s. Sure. It was Don Carter. Wow. <laughs> Million dollars is cool, but Don Carter never won the Order Eaters Championship. No, he did not. Who was victorious? Uh, Big Earn McCracken. Big Earn. <laughs> this text I thought you'd appreciate, Nick. Uh, is Nick 
really banging my mom? You see, I, I didn't hear the sarcasm horn when he said it, and, <laughs> and now I'm a little worried. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> we used to always blow the sarcasm horn. <laughs> It, it looks like it would equate to about $9.8 million today. It would, okay. Yeah. That's, that's a good coin. $9.8 million, Wapple well, says. Well, bowling was on TV mm-hmm. more often back in those days. Yes, too. it was. I didn't so. know that. What was that one show where they would bowl for prizes and they would have different pin setups that you would try to hit? Well, you're talking about bowling for dollars. Yeah. Yes. Randy and I watched that on television. Yeah. Um, and, and they still have bowling on television, but they do, but not as often. It, it's it's hard to follow when mm-hmm. and what well, channel. For the longest that's time, correct. for the longest time, they had a deal with ESPN, and they would be on at 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. before they fired up that stupid, stupid NFL coverage. For the longest time, they were Sunday mornings on ESPN. Now I, I, you know, I'm not that good with the television. I uh, I can't find it. And when I do, it's usually not live. It's a repeat. I love bowling on television. So it's just difficult. to NHRA, same thing. NHRA had that deal with ESPN for so many years. Sunday night starting around 6 o'clock. But now I'm going to show football all the time. <laughs> yeah, I feel like bowling and racing, I feel those are... Two that have been relegated to the ESPN Plus, the streaming service. I think now it's a Fox Sports deal. Yes. Yes. Racing is, for sure. Yes. Racing and I think bowling now is a Fox Sports deal. They still air poker, don't they? You you can still watch poker tournaments, can't you? You know, I have zero interest in watching, so I don't know where they... That was big for a while. Not as often as it was for a long time. I see it on Bally a lot. Okay, so they do. Oh, yeah, they do. Yeah, if, if I turn the TV on maybe the next day after I turn the off the night before for a Twins game, there's poker mm-hmm. coverage during the day. Yeah, you know, nowadays it's harder for me to find Norm Duke and Jason Belmonte and Mark Roth and some of those guys I love to watch bowl over the years. Norm Duke, he's like four foot eleven. Yeah, it looks like a lot of bowling is on FS1. Uh, bowling on FS1? Yep. There you go. NFL fans had jokes about the first actual photo of the gas bag. Karen Rogers in his New York Jets uniform. Now, not a picture of him out there practicing, more of like a glamour shot that they'll put in a game program. Sure. They released, the Jets released the photo. Did you see the photo of Karen I did, and his I, sure I did. did not. I saw pictures of him. I think I think they opened camp yesterday. I think the yeah, they did. Mm-hmm. So they did. I, the New York. I saw some of the video of camp. So camp some started of the... and so did uh, Hard Knocks. Oh, Hard Knocks! They so started they, filming. They, yep, television uh, program. Um, a lot of folks were joking around about what Karen looked like. You know, he's not a kid anymore. Uh, some folks said he looks like a coach who's come out of retirement to play one last game. He that does. was my favorite. That That's was my favorite comment. Spot on. One individual said he looks like a character from The Longest Yard. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. He's kind of standing weird in the photo, too. Like, he doesn't know how to take a picture. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I can empathize with that. No, he's, <laughs> he's wearing... Um, He's wearing number eight this season. An NFL fan said how nice of him to wear the number of the amount of interceptions he'll throw against New England this season. Another (laughs) said he chose the number eight for the amount of games the Jets will win this season. This one cracked me up the most. For a second, one fan said, I thought this was a picture of Sam Bradford. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. (laughs) That one got waffle. (laughs) That's, That's pretty good. But maybe you had to be there, right, Randy? I uh, yes. Maybe you had to be there. I actually think if the Jets are healthy, they're going to be an interesting team. They've got a really good defense. If Brees Hall comes back healthy at running back um, from that knee injury, they've got young receivers. He's got guys that he trusts on the outside and Lazard. I hope they fall flatter on their face than any team we've ever seen. I think they're going to be an interesting club. Of all time. I hope it goes down as an all-time failure. 
Well. A ball player for the Jets by the name of Michael Clemens walked through the parking lot for the first day of training camp without his shirt. And he was also carrying a baseball bat wrapped in barbed wire like he was preparing for a match in Japan against okay. Terry Funk. Okay, that's <laughs> this is all, up on 93x.com. All for hard knocks. That's right. That's exactly yeah, what it is. All for mm-hmm. hard knocks. He wants it's to be just, the star of hard knocks. Others right. said it was more like he was a character on the television show, never saw it, The Walking Dead. That's what it was. Yeah, he had yeah. Lucille. He even named the bat Lucille, yeah. just like in the it's show. It's a badass show. little video. I like it. The slow motion shirtless muscular guy? Yeah, it's cool. Uh, not Terry Funk. Your name isn't Terry Funk. Your name is Wapple. Wapple. <laughs> I wish it was Terry Funk. Did Terry, oh, I wish you were Terry. Did Terry Funk ever name any of the weapons, the razor sharp weapons that he raked across Mick Foley's forehead in Japan? Did he ever name them? Not that I know of. Those guys would just bleed buckets and then go to a. Japanese bar and wipe them out a beer, didn't they, Waffle, back in those days when Funk and Mick Foley were in Japan? (laughs) Former 49ers quarterback Steve Young is returning to the football field this fall, Randy Shaver. Okay, good. I know he got let go by ESPN. Did they they can him? Yeah. Yeah. They they, they can't a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not right. Yeah. Um, Including Susie Kolber, which is a shame. He is going to, Steve Young is going to be an assistant coach for a girls' flag football team in California. Is his daughter playing? But two of them. Okay, got it. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. He's going to be an assistant coach for the flag football team, the girls' flag football team at a joint called Menlo School in Atherton, California. Sure. This will be the first official season for fall girls' flag football. The state of California approved this sport for high schools in February. Both of his daughters are going to go ahead and play. Yeah, That sounds cool. Flag football has made a resurgence, uh, even here in Minnesota, in the sense that... Well, they play it in the NFL. They might as well play it at the youth yeah, level, too. They, dot, it, dot, 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 dot. Sarcasm horn. Where is it? Oh, darn it. <laughs> go ahead, Randy. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, it just, it's, it's, uh, it's keeping player young kids in the game without the contact until they get older yeah. and stronger yeah and it's uh, and they're doing it on purpose uh, local communities are playing more flag football just to for that reason kids still you. want to play football but they're not quite big enough to play and you know some kids you know they're well like wapple you know late late spurts what the you hell? What, what get, dude? Talking about? Yeah. <laughs> You'll get there we're someday. Still, we're still waiting for <laughs> Wapple's late late surge. We are. You are going yes. to fill out eventually, <laughs> Wapple. Your, your body's going to go through some changes. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? Just all of a sudden, someday I walk in six five, just right. two hundred fifty pounds. You will Head's fill out. Still the same size. Yeah, like a small head. <laughs> I understand what you mean, Randy. They're keeping the kids away from contact to try to keep them interested, and the parents won't be panicking about concussions. And th- yep. Tell Boy. the kids, football is the one sport that you can pick up as a high school senior and jump in and play. You don't have to have played all the way through. It helps, certainly, but it but but it's not necessary. And so um, that's the way a lot of communities will keep kids interested in the game until they – are ready for contact. Well, there's a coach so. in Egan that told us if there's if you have three concussions, you're out. Three, if they have three confirmed concussions, so if you get a concussion sure. in third grade, you know there's one, and if right. it happens again, you're out. So they re- they were recommending some kids wait a little yep. bit to make sure mm-hmm. they can play yeah. high school. I, I understand mm-hmm. what they're doing. I was, of course, you'd have to be an idiot not to understand what they're doing. I can. I'm just picturing myself when I was say 13 years old. If suddenly they abruptly said, well, we're changing football now. We're going to play flag football so none of you get hurt. Boy, I would have been pissed off because well, I love diving headlong into somebody's knees when they weren't looking. They're, they're not <laughs> changing anything. They're just making that a- an option for kids. They're still tackle football at third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. But they're, okay. they're keeping flag football alive for uh, kids to have an option. A different option. I mean, I know that in the last 10 years or so, there's been this this new movement in youth football where you try to teach the kids to use their shoulders to tackle as opposed to their helmets. When I was a kid, our coaches specifically oh, said, 
you aim your helmet at this guy's chest. That's it, correct. That's just you the way it was. That's and the way we were taught. I, specifically, yep. I aim my helmet at that weak ass little and rubber chin strap that we, we used to we, use. We should we should clarify that it wasn't the helmet; it was your face mask. Well, uh, we yeah. were told helmet, face mask, same damn yeah. thing. Yeah, we were, well, it's not though. You don't want to put the top of your head into somebody's chest. Well, I that's think, what we were told. Well. Then you were taught wrong. It, it was a face mask. Well, it wasn't just one chair. guy, Randy. Just so that you can see what you're tacking. I was taught wrong. You were. You don't put the crown. It worked. Of, you don't put the top of your helmet, your head, into somebody's chest. Well, it That's worked every time I did it. They'd go down. Well, you're lucky. I'm not saying it was the healthiest you're thing luck, in the world. I'm just telling you how it was. Neck. Of course, it. of course, I know I'm lucky. We're all lucky we didn't break. I wasn't. I wasn't the only. The, this was something that we were taught. You use the top of your helmet and you put it in their chest. And like I said, I would aim for their chin. But things are different now. Things are a lot different now. Apple always went groin for some reason. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I was taught. (laughs) Yeah, but not by a coach. It was a neighbor guy. I was (laughs) self-taught. Hey, Arena Football's coming back to the Twin Cities. How about that? Uh, Bring back the Pike. Pike. Yeah, I went to a Pike game when I was a kid. Sure, Ricky Foggy. Yeah, Were they only around one season? One season, yeah. They were, one year. I was there to see Ricky Foggy, by God. I can can tell you that right now. Bring back the Pike. Bring back the Minnesota Moose. Ah, the hockey team. Mm -hmm. Guy I went to high school with played for the Moose. There's going to be an Arena Football team in St. Paul in 20 plus 24. Cool. Really? I thought you would take a massive dump all over this. No, I think it's oh. uh, it's an option, and I'm sure they'll make it fun. I'm sure they'll find a way to make it fun. Didn't I never you? went to a Pike game. Do, is it kind of like minor league um, baseball where sometimes they're a little more loose, have a little yeah, more fun? Yeah, they have. They have I don't remember. I went once. We drank a lot of beer. I don't remember. I was just you, there to see Ricky Foggy. Yeah, you can't, you can't make it a s- totally serious game because I don't think it – I think that turns off – People, I think you got to have it like, kind of like what the Saints were for baseball. Okay. Make, it, make it like a swarm game. Yep. Yeah. Like I went, a swarm. I went yep. to one of those, yep. and that was enough, too. Oh, no, I really liked it, but I, I, it was I also enough. I, yeah. I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought it was cool they are no. playing rock music during play. I mean, mm-hmm. you're not oh, used yeah. to that. Wapple, didn't you think Randy was going to undo his trousers and pull down his underwear and take a massive dump all over this? <laughs> oh, totally. God. Well, God. Just like he does to the XFL. Yeah, we talk about the XFL and That's the USFL. Different. You are trying to be the NFL. That would be a change for Randy, though, if his underwear was off when the poop came out. Usually it's <laughs> oh my God. at his age. You know. Oh, my God. I'm getting there. It you happens. Saying, you say my reflexes are so slow. I can't get my underwear down fast enough. No, I just mean when you get older, sometimes accidents happen. <laughs> What's no, wrong no, with the... saying you wear diapers. <laughs> oh, my God. Come on. I don't get it, Randy Shaver. I mean, so so what if the USFL and the XFL are trying to be the NFL? I You'd rather that's... watch football where they're crashing into boards in a hockey rink? I think that's a little bit more entertaining. I think you can sell that to kids and have more fun with it. You, you've obviously never watched a game... Uh, a St. Louis Battlehawks game. <laughs> I, I haven't, and I never will. They're they're so, in the ah. XFL. Kaka. Yes. My yeah. My complaint about the XFL is I was hoping for more wrestling. You know, we're not actual wrestling, but more gimmicks yeah. like WWE uh-huh. gimmicks. We well, had he hate me, but that's about it. Just the name. When they first started, I mean, I suppose the way they, I mean, there were some obvious changes in the rules, but. Jim Ross and Jesse Ventura and Lawler. I mean, they were they were kind of wacky about it at first, and then they decided to go more mainstreamed. For those of you who old, who are old enough to remember the first season of the XFL, at first they tried to make it kind of WWE ish, and that wasn't working. So then they started calling games straight up, and you don't have Jesse Ventura in the booth to talk three right. four defense strategies. <laughs> you know, right. you have Jesse in the booth, rah, 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 you know all that stuff. It was really interesting. The uh, was it a thirty for thirty or something they did on the XFL and like the nuances that the XFL had that the NFL then took. Like yes, ha- like having well, sky cams and stuff sure, like that. How sure. the XFL had a dude just with a camera and a helmet, and he would run in with the play. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's like running behind the running back. <laughs> now the XFLs, uh, not the XFL, arena footballs. You want to hear the other cities involved in this resurgence of arena football? Come 2020, sure. I'm telling you, these are my damn. They're going to sure have a Des team. Des Moines in, in it. Uh, Des Moines is not in there. Oh, Iowa's got to have a team. Yeah, bring back the Barnstormers. There's yeah. no Iowegians mentioned here in the story, Randy. Really? Wow. Yeah, you folks are too busy 
shucking corn or whatever the hell you do down there. <laughs> Austin, Texas. Boise, Idaho. Oh, Chicago. Okay. Somewhere's in California. Somewhere's in Colorado. Louisiana. You think they'll name him after that stupid Adam Sandler movie, whatever that team was, the Mud Bunnies or whatever they were? Remember the Adam Sandler movie where he was a football player? Oh, Waterboy? Yeah. What was that club called? The uh, I've remember. never actually seen it. Yeah, it's been years. Is it decent? Or oh, no? it's terrible. It's Even Adam when I was Sandler. a kid, I didn't think it was that funny. Oh, the really? only yeah. saving grace of, uh, what's the movie called again? Waterboy. The only saving grace behind that movie is Jerry Reed. Yeah, the Mud Dogs. Mud Dogs? Mm-hmm. Ohio's going to have a team. Oregon, Orlando, Florida, Philadelphia, St. Louis, Tallahassee, that's a, Florida. That's a lot of travel. Wow. Tennessee, Washington, West Texas. This is all one league. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, Jerry Reed was the only good thing about uh, the water board. The other day I was listening to an old Jerry Reed song. You guys know uh, when you hot, you hot. When you're hot, you're mm-hmm. hot. Yes. God, that's such a great song. He's talking about he's rolling dice. He's rolling them bones. And he looked up, and there was a big old cop. And he said, you know, when you hot, you hot. And I said, yeah, thanks a lot. It's Jerry Reed. He's dead now. No. Oh. Yeah. News to uh, me. Ashley, did you see the uh, post from the Broughton Bruins? No, I didn't. They raised $14,000. Oh, that's awesome. Incredible. When you were out there, Ashley, you never told us any stories about that. Yeah, you didn't tell us ahead of time, after time. Never said a damn thing. Oh, it was, I mean. Out there on that Saturday, they had a big uh, one-day tournament. Uh, Knocking Out Cancer was the name. Ryan Grams was the young guy who got this started. And the Broughton Bruins uh, baseball team and all these other teams that took part uh, in that tournament that day uh, raised $14,000 for cancer research and patient aid. That's incredible news. Thank you to those guys. That was great. It was a beautiful day for baseball that Saturday, too. Wisco Maple Syrup Jesus has checked in on the arena football team topic. Minnesota's getting an arena football team. Uh Great. Now they're going to want a professional football (laughs) team, too. (laughs) (laughs) Wisco Maple Syrup Jesus. One last thing for you, Nick. Yes. Happy birthday, Tony Oliva, today. That's a beautiful thing. 85. Is he 85 now? Yep. Happy birthday, Tony O. Tap assed morning show. 69. <laughs> this show sucks. Who are you, fart knockers? 93X. CJ Ham for standard heating and air conditioning. When I'm on the field, I can take anything. But at home with my family, we like everything to be comfortable. That's why I trust the pros at Standard. They've been keeping Minnesotans like me comfortable for over 90 years. Is your cooling system making strange noises or not cooling properly? Don't wait for an AC breakdown this summer. Get a free in-home estimate with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Schedule your appointment today at standardheating.com. Stacking Benjamins with Joe and his good friend OG not only has great financial insight, it's laid back with humor too. Mr. Len Penzo's here. Now when I buy something, I'm like, can I actually spend any time with this thing. Len, I would imagine you've got to think about that too when you're buying stuff. You know, before I was retired, if I wanted something, I bought it. I don't care what it was. The Kings were in the Stanley Cup Finals and me and the Honeybee, yeah. I mean, we, we didn't even think about it. 3600 bucks on two tickets. Now that I'm retired, those days are gone. <laughs> the Stacking Benjamin Show, available on YouTube or wherever you listen. Okay, you see what he did? He french fried when he should have pizza. French fried when you pizza, you're going to have a bad time. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. What the hell are we doing now? It's uh, Thursday. It's 8.34 in the godforsaken AM. The big Barbie weekend is coming up. Everybody wants to fall down and touch themselves to Margot Robbie in the new Barbie movie this weekend. It's pretty crazy how how much hype this, this is getting. How many tickets they've pre-sold, all that. Yeah, I have a lot of friends that are planning out their outfits. They bought, you know, dresses to wear, Barbie-like outfits to wear to the movie. To a lot of go, pink. Yeah, go see it over the weekend. I heard that there's like a paint shortage of pink because they use so much in the movie set and <laughs> That's stuff right. like that. That makes wow. sense. Yeah, you just killed a stupid news story for tomorrow. Thanks, Wapple. But yes, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Wait a My minute. Bad. All throughout the world, we're, we're out of pink paint because of the sets they used while filming the Barbie movie? Mm-hmm. Yeah, worldwide shortage of pink yep. paint. Anyone here have a Barbie doll when they was a kid? I I've, did, but I was more of a Bratz girl. 
I've heard you mention that before, brats. Yeah, it makes more sense. What for makes sure. more sense? <laughs> that I was more into brats. Girl. Oh, brats you do, do like, seem like more of they, a brat style. They wore punk rock outfits and lots of makeup. I think, <laughs> yeah. right? Okay. <laughs> My sister had Barbie dolls. And I, I got to say, I feel a little guilty about this, but I was a curious young boy. Take and a little I, peek. I did take a peek. At least he didn't draw all over their faces with permanent marker like my brother did to my dolls. Why would he do something like that? Because he hates me. And thank you for jumping on that so I didn't feel this disgusting. <laughs> you undressed a Barbie doll to see what was uh, happening underneath? When I f- saw my first real one, you'd be surprised at how surprised I was. <laughs> oh, yeah. That doesn't... What's happening here? That doesn't look like what Barbie looks like. <laughs> you were a good kid, weren't you, Josh? I tried to be. You were a good kid. I still do feel uh, a little awkward about that. Everyone did it. I used to have uh, Barbie art in my bathroom, actually. What is Barbie art? Like old-timey like photos, like black and white photos of vintage Barbies. Was your mom into it? or My, were my you wife, my ex-wife. Oh. Oh, oh. so yours as an adult. Yeah, as an adult, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. She liked the Barbie. Oh, so is she like super pumped for this? Oh thing? yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. She told me she's got an outfit plan, everything. That's so. awesome. I actually have a Barbie in my living room now. That I think about it, it's an Alex Morgan. She's a U.S. soccer player. They made a <laughs> Alex Morgan Barbie doll of her in her uniform. I have that in my living room actually. You ever Man. get weird with that thing, Dana? You ever sleep with it? <laughs> uh, anyway, Nick, where were we going with this? <laughs> <laughs> God dang. <laughs> yeah, Josh, you were a good kid. Folks online have confessed to the terrible things they did when they were a kid. You want to hear about it? Is there anybody out there? Yeah. I oh, thought that was rhetorical. Yeah, 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 me too. <laughs> That's why we're here, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Might as well. I think I told you before I spit in my grandpa's face once when I was a real little kid. Just Out of like, anger? Yeah. Because I've gleeked before by accident. That's embarrassing. That is embarrassing. And the poor, the poor bastard died shortly thereafter. So really, honestly, my last memory of any interaction with my grandpa was me spitting in his face. Oh. And there's lots of other things that I can't even talk about on the radio. We were pretty reckless. I did once fool my mother into thinking I was going to jail. Uh, he, here's, uh, here are some terrible things that people confess to doing as children. All right? And if anybody has anything they want to get off their chest, cause, and, and don't instantly jump all over these people. They are, uh, is the correct word, Josh? They are repenting. Yes. They are regretful. Of, they're not bragging. They're admitting it happened. I made a yo mama joke to my friend the week that his mother died. Oh. Uh. I knew about it. <laughs> I had just totally forgot. I remembered that his mother had died the second it came out of my mouth. Oh, oh man. That's tough. Oh! I used to mention that when I would ever do your mom jokes. I'd be like, unless she's dead, then I'm sorry. <laughs> I had a friend who, anytime somebody threw a your mama joke at him, he would say something t- terrible had happened to his mom. He got pretty creative with it. Oh, yeah. That's good. That's good. That's oh, yeah. Good and he, I mean, he made one kid almost cry. The kid <laughs> felt so bad. Oh, yeah. He was the best at it. Ah, I got to remember to mention something here. If we're going to continue on. Uh, here's uh, an individual who confessed to terrorizing many small animals. It's concerning. Yeah. Yeah, I'd probably hide that. Take that one to the grave. I dropped a baby chick down a sewer pipe at the zoo when I was three. Oh, oh. Give me the chills. I plucked all the feathers out of my sister's cockatiel. Owie. I accidentally killed my pet rat and pet parakeet by jumping on on them. I was four. I was four, they say. My I've, uncle loved a duckling so much, my dad got for Easter, he squeezed it to death by accident. Oh, just like uh, of mice and oh, men. I know, oh. yeah, dude, that messed me up as a kid. There was a, they gave my uncle a nickname, was that Lenny? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay, yeah. that's the reference. Yep. Yeah, my, they called my uncle Lenny. I, I knew dude. it was from a show. I've never saw of mice and men. That's he just jacked up. He hugged it so hard it died. Yeah, or read it. Yeah, I, yeah. It upped and died. They called him Lenny. Now, this oh. individual, now just to so say you feel better about all this. This individual who claimed to have terrorized many small animals when they were four, they go on to say, I have treated all my pets past that age with great care and gentleness, and I will do everything in my power for their health and comfort. I just didn't comprehend pain and death at the age of four. Mm. Makes sense. How could you? Terrible things that people 
are confessing to doing as children. I put itching powder on a little girl on the bus. She had an allergic reaction and lost giant patches of hair. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I hit a neighbor kid in the head with a baseball bat for calling my mom fat. Whew. I like that he defended his mom, but... <laughs> Little much, Bro. bit of an overkill there, yeah. I blame my brother for pooping in the sink when it was actually me. <laughs> <laughs> Just picturing that happening, somebody pooping in the sink yeah. is hilarious. <laughs> I stole some money out of my teacher's purse. Oh, that's cold. <laughs> it still haunts me 30 years later. They make so little, and it probably had a significant impact. Oh, Jeez, yes. how much did he steal? Especially looking back. Yeah, it must have been a wad. Must have been a wad if he's this yeah. regretful over it. It wasn't a five. No, or 20. Had I a significant impact. That. that is crazy. To, I think about that sometimes because when I, I was younger, there was times where I swiped some money from my mom's purse. And I can't imagine like my, my own kid betraying me like that, taking my money, <laughs> going in there and thinking you're crazy because, hey, what happened to the 50 I had in here? Now, uh, I see some text messages coming in where some members of the brother and sisterhood are confessing. And it's just, it's true confession time. It's time to repent. It's okay. They're uh, confessing to the terrible things they did as children. We may have to read through a few of those when we have a minute. Here's one to start with. Candy Sheezus accidentally killed her guinea pig. She put him in a baby buggy and pushed it down a hill when she was four. Oh! No. I'm sure she thought she was just giving her little buddy a ride. Yeah. It's tough. Guinea pigs, uh, don't ever invite them to a billiard tournament either. Uh, or at least if you invite them to the tournament, don't let them watch from table level. Uh, this is a, I'm drawing from an episode from when I was young. You know what I mean? Yeah. I hated ants so much as a kid, says another individual. I used to drown them in glue. I felt weird about it then, but now I'm mortified. <laughs> Did you guys ever do the uh, magnifying glass thing on an anthill or anything like that? I never that? had no. the patience no. for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the truth. I never had the patience for that. These ants aren't dying fast enough. <laughs> I learned not too long ago that my boyfriend did that, and I was very alarmed. And he was like, that's normal. That's normal? You did that too, Josh? I, well, yeah. I think I think it's pretty common. I thought, what are you talking about? The magnifying on the ants? Yeah, I thought yeah, every kid like did it. Every, kid, bugs and so. every okay. kid in America oh, no. from 1941 to 1976 killed ants with a magnifying glass. Okay. Yeah. I like to just kind of step on the ant hills and kind of knock over the big ones and just make them start all over again. There you go, like, Wapple. <laughs> jacked up. I am I not, it's not jacked up. I I just, the thought process behind yeah. it is the jacked up part. Like, now you got to start from yeah. the beginning. I'm 51 years old. I have ant problems in my front yard. I still do that, Wapple. <laughs> I wait until they get really tall. I kick like, it over and I say, now what are you lazy yeah. pricks going to do? you got to start all over again. Yeah, you were doing that for two months. Good luck. When I was a kid, I did. I really enjoyed killing bees. Okay, back to this article, this report, people confessing the terrible things they did as children. Stabbed a kid in the neck with a pencil once in middle school. Oh. Not hard enough to make him bleed, just enough so he felt significant pain. I don't remember why I did it, but man, did I get in trouble. Sorry, Caleb, I was an <laughs> idiot. I hope your neck is okay. <laughs> a friend of mine's son just did that to another kid. Stabbed him with a pencil? Yeah, shortly after stabbing a teacher with a pencil. Oh, wow. I no longer visit that child. <laughs> that, that sounds like that child has stabbing issues. <laughs> Josh and I are both survivals of pencil stabbings. We really are. This one this one kind of gave me the creeps when I read this. Little, little kid, I bit our dog's ear to see how hard I could bite before he squealed. Oh, wow. Mm. Now they felt terrible right away. Well, how hard? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you want to know how hard you <laughs> yeah. have? I threw our kitten pretty far. Oof. Um, he was fine except for getting the wind knocked out of him. <laughs> <laughs> That's so bad. I think I was in second or third grade. They say I'm 39 now, and I still think about it. I wonder what a cat sounds like trying to catch its wind. I don't know. Not that's that's kind of creepy that you're... Yeah. Uh, I don't you know. psychopath? Mm -hmm. Friggin' Dahmer know. over there. It's, 
I remember a friend of my brother's, we were um, out in our yard, and he brought over a BB gun, and he shot a squirrel, and he cried. Mm. Well, I was holding back tears myself. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> oh, I've told you the story about the, the squirrel, and I had a BB gun, and how long it took him to die. Oh, you kept going? I had to. To try and put him out of his misery? I had misery? to, yes. Yeah. And it was it was instant regret. I shot a squirrel out of a tree. I was a little kid. And then I found him on the ground. And, of course, like uh, my only experience in gun violence at that age was uh, watching television. So I assume when I found him on the ground, he'd be deader than disco, right? Mm-hmm. He's sitting there staring at me, wondering why. And he was in pain. I pumped away on that poor bastard forever. Oh. I, tried, I had to put him out of his misery. It was devastating. And I said to myself, what have you done? You know, you're a little kid. You don't know any better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Here's somebody who tied a kid to a tree and peed on him. Oh. <laughs> the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Oh, absolutely wonderful. You know, we all did crazy things when we were little kids. Little kids. You're too young to understand a lot of things. You're destructive. You can't help yourself. You're stupid. So we've been talking about some folks on the internet put together a report social media kind of a thing and these people were confessing the terrible things they did as children all of them very regretful very regretful things like you know uh, being mean to animals Uh, what else did I cover when we were talking Uh, being mean to animals stabbing 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 people with pencils urinating on people tied to stuff (laughs) And the brother and sisterhood have joined in with some text messages. What have uh, what have they been confessing to on your end, Josh? Half-ass worker Jesus said that he shot a spit wad at a girl on his bus, and then she beat up his brother, and he never told him that he's the one that shot the spit wad. At him. <laughs> and he wrote, "I feel bad to this day. I'm sorry, Andrew." <laughs> she beat up his brother, yeah. thinking he never said a word. No, didn't confess. Once you saw that. That beaten dished out. You wanted no part of it. I get it. Uh, Outdoor weed, Jesus said. My buddy had a blind cat. So we would sit on the edge of the porch and say, Here, kitty. And it would walk off the end of the porch. Oh, Oh. no. Oh. (laughs) Poor cat. Blind kitty. Yeah. Uh, This person, this is crazy cat man, Jesus. I hated my babysitter, so I locked myself in the bathroom, blocked the door with the drawers, then flushed an entire roll of toilet paper and watched it flood the room. Oh, (laughs) damn. Wow. Ruining your own folks' house. I used to take my dad's diabetic needle and inject worms with peroxide. They'd get big and explode. Uh, Ah! Uh, when I was a kid, a bunch of us were running around following each other. I did a spontaneous cartwheel, not realizing someone was behind me, and I knocked her front teeth. Oh. Felt so knocked out. Excuse me, her front teeth. I knocked felt them so right bad. out. Uh, it happens. I'm trying to catch up with some of these. Yeah, they're coming in fast. Yeah. A lot of the people have <laughs> things they need to confess. Here's an individual at four years old. He was at his grandparents' house. They had a wiener dog. He ran into the living room and yelled, football, and he kicked the dog. Oh. He regretted it. Yeah, Up at I the would cr- too. Yeah, me too. Up at the crack of dawn, Jesus gave a classmate a DDT in grade school, broke two of his ribs. I still feel bad. Oh, <laughs> my oh, God. That's the, a old, DDT. the old DD, like Jake the Snake Roberts. Uh, Skitty Jesus said, I hate to admit it, but as a kid, there was a development being built by our house. I used to go cut the electrical on the equipment to slow them down. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm now a mechanic, God. and it still haunts me. Oh. That really costs so much money. I'll be damned. Brother and sisterhood texted, and they confessed the terrible things they did when they were little, little kids when I was seven. Says a listener, I was playing in the sandbox with a neighbor kid. He kept throwing sand at me. Some of it got in my eye. For some reason, there was a putty knife in the sandbox. I threw it at him, and it stuck in his face. Oh! Looks like out of a a comedy. Uh (laughs) And I ran away. Good call. Dude, you got a knife in your face. (laughs) Here's a guy who pooped in his buddy's cat's litter box. (laughs) Didn't George Clooney do that to somebody? He did as a yeah. prank. Yeah. When I he was... would well specifically he his roommate, he would take the cats, he would scoop the cats poop every day, 
and tell the roommate, I think the cat's constipated because it's not pooping. <laughs> so the roommate was concerned, took them, took the cat to the vet, was given a medication, all that kind of stuff. Then Clooney pooped in there and pretended it was the cat. <laughs> they had been saving it up. That's good. <laughs> One uh, listener says, when I was very young, I used to pull the legs off of daddy long leg spiders and then just leave them there. Oh. oh. I stabbed my brother in the testicles with a pen when I was five. Oh, man. New dad Jesus, new to the Jesus Club, welcome. I spray painted my dad's gold wing when I was a kid because I thought <laughs> he wanted it to look like his friends. My dad got home from work, he saw the paint, but it took him 30 minutes to figure out what I had painted. He was five at the time. Oh. I'm sure, you know, you're your kid. You're just trying to make your dad happy yeah. and have yeah. no idea what you really did. Here's a listener who damn near burned down his neighborhood playing with matches in the woods. Oof. A buddy of mine, he was, uh, he's a handyman, and he was at my house doing some work. He got a call, and he just went white. And he had to race home because he had bought, for him and his son to do something together, he bought some rockets. And they lived, they had a bunch of property. Like bottle rockets? Bo- like bo- well, no, like rockets that you'd make, you know, and shoot way up. Okay, like, you know, okay. Hobby rockets. I forget what sure. they're called. I, I see what you Not mean. Not a pocket rocket. But, oh. so, <laughs> they would make these things together and shoot them. And he t- he's told them time and time again, you know, we have to be together when you do it. Well, the kid, you know, he's too tempted. He decides to do it, and he started a huge grass fire, <laughs> burned down part of his neighbor's property, like took out, I think, a pole barn and a fence and all that stuff. The fire department had to show up with the planes, you know, that scoop up water oh, to put this thing on. Oh, my God. It was such it's, a big oh. deal. Some of these mistakes you made as a little kid were quite elaborate, um, if that's the proper word. I'll, I'll, I'll just dump it on you and see what you think. I mean, here's a guy whose dad started a coin collection when he was a kid with his father. So this listener's dad and grandfather had a lifelong coin collection. This guy went out and spent it. Oh. Oh, that no. sucks. Oh, my God. Taking some, like, rare, like, ninth, re- Revolutionary Wars at the era quarter and putting it into, like, a Pac-Man machine. <laughs> Seriously. No, 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 no. The kid, th- this other one, I just, I, I mentioned it briefly. Eight-year-old kid playing with matches in the woods. He starts a fire. The wind's blowing. The fire spreads. The fire department from three different towns come racing in. All he did... He ran away, but then he ran back and joined the other witnesses. Said, oh, hey, what's going on here? Wow, this is crazy. They, they freaking... say they always do. They, the cops, they'll look, right? If it's a murder or something, they look in the crowd. They return to the scene. I've got a final final here, and thank you for confessing to these things. We did some confessions of our own earlier. We're I all regretful. Feel better. I, I hope it does make you feel We're all regretful. We're little kids. We didn't know what the hell we were doing. And you're all forgiven. Everybody's forgiven. My final final. Uh, this uh, listener was 12. He feels terrible about this. He was 12. His friend had a hot sister. Ooh. And he stole a pair of her underwears once out of curiosity. <laughs> stole her underwears. Just one pair. She probably didn't even miss it. Safe travels to Marissa, Talia, Big Sexy, and Michaela. They're going for 10 days out to Colorado, Wyoming, and Montana. That should be a nice trip. Union Drywall Jesus wants to wish a happy 38th birthday to his fiance. And another reminder about the Shaver Shuffle 5K. It's back next month. An annual benefit for the Randy Shaver Cancer Research Fund. You can join them Saturday, August 5th, 9 a.m. in Plymouth, or sign up to run virtually any day of the month of August. You can do so on 93x.com. You got a chance to win a pair of Apple AirPod Pros along with prizes for winners in several categories. The 93x Half-Assed Morning Show. 93. 93X Half-Assed Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. New episodes drop each weekday. If your podcast platform has ratings, go ahead and give us five stars and uh, maybe give our enemies one. Thanks, and here's a word from our sponsor. Don't wait for an AC breakdown this summer. Get a free in-home estimate with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Schedule your appointment today at standardheating.com.